I'm a lone survivor, come and bring it Everything you got, you finna need it Better take a shot, I get defeated Cause I'm taking the spot at the top, you best believe I'm a lone Ready to see some wrestling tonight? You ready to see who's gonna be the lone survivor tonight? My name Peasy. I'm your Get High rapper, and I'm here to perform for you this track for this show tonight. And y'all about to witness. It's called Low Survivor.
Maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, before our opening contest, we'd like to hear a few words from our general manager, Alex Rojas. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody's favorite fun boy, Mark Adam Haggy. Let's give it up for Hag. Yeah. Northampton, Massachusetts, how are you guys feeling tonight? Yeah. Real quick, um, I want to get all the sentimental stuff out of the way. This is our second time in Northampton. The first time you guys embraced us, showed us nothing but love. You came out, you did it again. I am so grateful to each and every one of you for spending the night with us. So allow us to entertain you with the best event professional wrestling has to offer. Welcome to Lone Survivor. Alex Rojas, everybody. And are you folks ready for your opening contest? Your opening contest here at Lone Survivor is a six-man tag team contest scheduled for one fall. Introducing first. Making their way to the ring, being accompanied by Jay Bricks. First, from Waterbury, Connecticut, he weighs in at 180 pounds. The coat already, Elijah Six. Next, from Syracuse, New York, he weighs in at 200 pounds. Moonlight Sun, Mike. Kairos. And finally, from Detroit, Michigan, weighing as much as a full trash can, Kevin Cartwright. First, about to make his way to the ring, hailing from New York Roll Boulevard, he weighs in at 190 pounds with a 33 pound head, the Light Seeker. Chabroni! And his tag team partners. First, from Cleveland, Ohio, the devilish angel, Dashe Simone. And finally, from Heiko, Texas, weighing in at 215 pounds, Garrett Holiday. My name is Jason Stewart. I am joined here at the broadcast booth by Slade Dangerfield. Slade, what an unbelievable card we have tonight for the fans at home. Let me tell you, Jason, this match right here, these six men kicking off the show, they got to set the tone for the night. And right now we're going to see if they're going to do just that. A lot of history building up to this one. We're going to get into that as the match progresses. But obviously right off the bat, you're talking about an intergender six-person tag. Some people might look at that and say the team with the female competitor is at a disadvantage, but I don't think that's the case here tonight. I personally can vouch for Daje. I've been in the ring with Daje back in another federation, and let me tell you right now, she's not a joke, but she's not someone to underestimate. No, and I spoke to her before the show tonight. She feels as though she's been significantly disrespected by Elijah as of late. And she's coming out here tonight looking very much forward to proving her point. And while I respect her talent, 
I think Six has all the reason in the world to think this is a joke. Well, we are going to see Elijah Six, certainly a very talented competitor in his own right. So he's no pushover, and Daje is biting off a big chunk here. We'll see if she can chew it. Six sizing her up. Shouldn't be too hard. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's what I like to see. That is not a class competitor right there. She's ready to call, call her elbow tie up with them. Kicks her right in the gut. Oh. Oh. Brutal forearms to the back now, a chop to the chest. And now, oh, was that a closed oh. fist? Come on. I'm thinking she threw the closed fist. Come on, Stuart, open your eyes. Sends her into the corner. Oh. Yeah, she was trying to get out of the way, but on event, unable to do so. And Elijah Six made full contact. And now he's charging in again. She goes up to the second rope. Let's head flip. Here we go. One. Kick two. Out. Almost had a big upset right off the bat there. Elijah unfazed goes in for the chop. She ducks out of the way. Sends her off the ropes. Drops the shoulder. Another sunset flip attempt. Way too close to the ropes, though. Only a two count. You know, you go to the well too many times, and that's what happens. Absolutely. you got to question the strategy of having Daje start this match. Might have been better off with a more experienced competitor like El Jabroni in there to start this one off. I absolutely agree. And I'm sure it was nothing more than stubbornness that got her in that spot. I wonder if once she saw it was Elijah starting off the match, if she immediately took control there and said, I'm, I'm starting off with him. That's what I'm thinking. And I think that was probably the worst move that team could have made. Well, we will see. Oh, looks like El Jabroni almost pulled off a tag to the back there. There's a nice arm drag takeover. Six get the tag there? No, I, oh. I thought he might, but no, Kevin Cartwright now in the ring with Daje. Oh, back to her corner, finally makes the tag. Rick Recon stepping into the ring now, ducks that shot. Oh, that's not Rick Recon, no, that's Garrett Holiday. I'm sorry, I apparently have been mistaken. He's giving wrong information here. Garrett Holiday, I apologize. Oh, Mike Skyros oh. eats a right hand. What a right hand. And now he is unloading. Oh, blocks oh. that one. He's going to go for the reversal. Nope. Shot to the midsection. Oh, he's got him. What's he going to do here? Uh-oh, what's he talking? Oh. Oh! <laughs> Lighten up the chest. Come on, referee. Kevin we got to check those. Oh, looks like he's trying to walk the ropes here. Walking that second rope. Using all that momentum for that beal. Big drop kick back into the corner. Cartwright's in trouble right now. You know, you got to wonder what all that fancy footwork gets you in the end. And now he's going to charge to the corner. Skyros pulls his partner uh -huh. out of the way. That's smart tag team wrestling right there. Well, and they are a tag team. The Killer Assassins, they are working. They know how to work together very well. You saw it right there. Knew when his partner needed the assist and provided it where the referee couldn't see it. Beautiful work right there, Jason. Satmare takeover now on holiday. He's got that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Good variation on the uh, sleeper there. All you got to know is he's putting him right to sleep. This is the end right here. I know it. And you see what he's doing there? He's leading all of his weight on the back. So now he's cutting off the oxygen supply and at the same time forcing him to carry that additional weight on his back. Very technically sound move by Skyros. That's right. And this crowd trying to get behind Garrett Holiday here. Skyros. Oh. Skyros unfazed by those elbows, and now he's telling the crowd to quiet down a little bit. You know, y'all smarter than him yet again, I'm telling you. I'll tell you what, I have seen the Midnight Sun, Mike Skyros, come up basically from his rookie wow! year. Wow! Oh, it's a I've seen that kick come up from his rookie year. The improvements he has made in such a short period of time, very impressive, young athlete. Now you got that right, Garrett Holiday is impressive. But I'm telling you right now, my money's still on six and the rest of the team over there. Oh, well, now Daje in, and oh, oh, oh. So she was able was to reverse that? that momentum and got him over, and oh, straight forearms to the face. Skyros, a little a little unaware for that. Didn't know how to react. Now Daje sets him off the rope. Skyros with the reversal, has him up. Oh, looks like head scissors oh. take over. Nice move by Daje. Come on. Didn't quite lock her legs all the way around, but had enough momentum to get Skyros over. Now Kevin Cartwright comes in. Oh, wait a second. Oh, she's got them both hooked up. Oh! DDT flatliner combination. I don't Daje, think it's going to be enough. This could be it right here. Daje with the cover. Only gets two. I'll tell you what, that was an explosive sequence by Daje. I did not expect that. I didn't see that coming, but that was not enough to put out anyone. You know, you got to know, Daje, she's got a really, really low 
you know, tolerance when it comes to the pain that these guys oh, are going to dish out. She's not used to being in the ring oh, with bigger guys. And she's on the wrong part of the ring right now. She's in their corner, and uh-oh. And Oh, come on. You just saw right there the manager, Jay Bricks, got up on the ring and tried to get involved, distracted her, and now Dajay in the wrong part of town, and she's in a bad way. Oh, that backbreaker right across the knee. Dajay's in trouble. She needs a tag in the worst way. We have yet to see El Jabroni even get into this match. That's because Elijah Six is out there controlling the match with the rest of Kevin Cartwright and Mike Skyron. These two guys, let me tell you, they're putting on a clinic. I told you from the start, it was the biggest mistake that Garrett and El Jabroni could have made putting her in the ring first. Well, we talked earlier on about the issues between Dajay and Eli's, Elijah Six, and he, is take, he seems to be taking a great deal of pleasure in inflicting pain on Dajay here tonight. Oh, come on now, look at this. All three in That's the That's right. That's how it's done. Oh my God. What a, this is not, you gotta get somebody in here to break this up, come on. This is exactly what we don't want. This is I'm already just, tired of seeing her out there as it is. This is just unbelievable, and you may have noticed the presence at Ringstein. Richard E. Stone Esquire has apparently secured the legal retainer rights to the killer assassins, as I understand it. Absolutely. You know, Richard Stone making his presence felt here with Elijah Six and Jay Bricks. I like this team together, and he brings a certain talent to the rest of them. You know, he's got something the rest don't have. That's that that law, that law and order. I, just, I, don't get the, I don't get the affiliation. I tried to ask Skyros about it before the show. He basically told me it's none of my business. Shut up. Well, that makes sense. You know, Elijah Six is going to do what he wants when he wants. Oh, there's a cover. A little bit of an embarrassing cover there by Cartwright. Looked like he was just <laughs> trying to show her up a little bit with that cover. Very nonchalant. Trying to get her up. Ooh. Oh, oh, shot to the back. All that weight right across the small of the back. If there's a weak point on any human being's body, it is the small of that back. So easy to inflict damage in that region. And that'll take you out real fast, Jason. Absolutely. And now look at that. He's just putting all that weight on the shoulder and now grinding in. I'll tell you what, Dajay's in a bad, bad way right now. She's got nowhere to go. Come on, referee, ask her. Uh, look at, and this, I will say this, the team of Elijah and the Killer Assassin is working really well as a team. They've cut the ring in half. They've kept Dajay on her side of the ring, on their side of the ring, I should say. And they are really just zoning in on body parts and wearing her down, driving her down to the canvas by the back of her head there. Well, they got the size advantage, so, you know, breaking her down systematically seems like a good idea. Yeah, size and power advantage to that team, but she needs to be work. She needed to use her speed. She didn't get enough of that in early on, and now she's paying the price for it. Being choked across that rope, and watch Stone on the outside there. Oh, oh it's Elijah. Come on, Elijah's choking her out oh. across the rope, behind the referee's back. Actually, it's spilling out right in front of us. Skyros took out Jabroni and used that as a way to distract the official. I'll tell you what, you don't have to like those tactics, but you do have to admit it was very, very smart strategy. To me, I appreciate tactics like that. Those are the exact same tactics that I deployed when I was in the ring. I've heard that about you, Slade. I know it's our first time working together, but I did my homework, believe me. Trust me, the rumors you heard are true. If you heard any. He's got her up. I'm not sure you want to co co corroborate all the rumors I've heard, if you know what I'm saying. We'll talk about that after the show. Elijah now picking her up, looking for that suplex. Oh, drops her back right. suplex. Drops her right on the back of her head, right into the cover. Doesn't hook the leg, though. Didn't, I think he's, uh, he doesn't take her seriously. See, that's the problem. You can tell by that lackadaisical cover. I can see a lot of star power in this Ooh. young man, Elijah Six. Oh, straight forearms to the back of her head. <laughs> This is just brutal. This is beautiful. Her partners have to get in there and help her out. Oh, she is just being dissected right now. A lot. I don't understand how she's still standing. I don't either. Credit to her. Now trying to fire off with those forearms, trying to get some separation so she can make a tag. But Elijah cuts it off with a forearm to the face. And Skyros giving him advice there. Oh, you got to wonder what he communicated. They have, they have worked together very well as a team in terms of communicating in that ring. They have gelled really well, I'll give you that. Oh, ducks oh, the close on DDT! Another DDT! Dajay with the DDT, and that's the opening she has been looking for right now. Six, you gotta get out! 
This is the moment she has got to make the tag here. That's where you're wrong. This is the moment that Elijah Six has to get up. Jay Bricks losing his mind on the outside, and I don't blame him. Elijah's got his head up, but he doesn't seem to know where he is right now. He's on Dream Street, but he's got to get it together. Come on, tag out Six. But he's getting his way to his corner, but so is Daje. Who gets there first, Daje? Daje makes the tag. El Jabroni and Six have a huge history. And our first look at them going together over the top. Oh. Takes out both members of the Killer Assassins. Back elbow. And a clothesline. Ducks underneath, has him up. What's he going to do with him? Little airplane spin action. Oh, this is embarrassing. He's got one arm. Oh, and he turns it in. Oh, my goodness. Turns it in to a variation on a Uranagi. What a combination by El Jabroni. He has electrified the crowd here. They're smart pull six Hampton. out of the ring, though. Uh-oh. Watch out, Jabroni. What's he going to do? Comes over. And, oh, takes out, the, takes out the attorney. And now he's taking out all three guys with a spear. Look at that. Oh. El Jabroni on fire. Right, spilling out right in front of us. Oh, oh my goodness. Come on. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he cracked his head right under like a coconut. Jay Bricks ate some steel on that one. And now it is Elijah Six and El Jabroni. I think Jabroni just made the tag. So I want to check out Bricks. They cracked his head like an egg. Daje, the legal person, neck breaker by Daje. Pulls out Elijah. Can she make a cover though? What is this? Three on one? Come on, referee, get him out of the right, ring. You didn't have a problem with the three on one strategy when it was Daje being victimized. Who are you to judge? And Garrett Holley has him up. Look at this, spinning him around like a top. He's got to be all sorts of groggy right now. Drops him down. And Daje right into the kick cover. Out, six, kick One, out. One, two. No. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Big mistake by El Jabroni. Wasn't paying attention. Allowed Skyros to come in the back door and break up that pinfall. And now Daje has Elijah Six in the ring by herself. Cartwright, Holiday, Jabroni, and Skyros brawling out on the floor. Jay Bricks is out. Richard Stone is out. Why is Daje talking to the crowd instead of taking the advantage? This is exactly what's going to cost her the match. I think Daje is looking to put him away here. We'll see what she has left in the tr Oh! Straight forearm to the face of Daje. I'll tell you what, Elijah Six. He is showing no mercy to Daje, but she ducks that clothesline. Can't see what she was going for. They looked like she went for another DDT. Elijah slipped out of it. I'm not even sure what's happening anymore. <laughs> Daje off the ropes. So much action. Went for a sunset, didn't quite get it. Oh, and Elijah drops down, coming. Oh, El Chabroni with the save. Turning the tables from earlier. Daje rolls him up. It's just got him. Daje with the punch there. Daje Simone scores the victory. I can't believe what I'm Let's seeing here. Elijah Six, for all the trash he talked, just got beaten by a woman. Here are your winners. The team of Garrett Holiday. I can't believe Simone this. And okay. I did not expect to see this outcome, but. The entire tone of the match turned when they got that tag to El Jabroni. He came in house of fire, took out everybody, and gave Daje a chance to catch her breath, get her bearings, and what a finish. What a way to put away Elijah Six. He asked me, they stole that victory. Uh, El Jabroni, definitely perhaps the MVP for his team tonight, with the final pinfall scored by Daje Simone, and that had to feel good for that young woman. And speaking, Slade, of young women, we are going to take it to ringside for Dina Renee, who's going to speak with our victors right now. So despite some questionable tactics used by your opponents, you guys were able to clean house tonight. What do you have to say? Well, <laughs> well, what I have to say is that is a true test of strength when you go up against a couple of bad guys and they try to do that. That's the true test of strength, and that's what you have to do to win. We won, we rose, and we were victorious. It's good to be back. Did you yeah. Eli wasn't, he wasn't lying when he said he's gonna come hard hitting. Uh, I tried my best in there, I gave it all I got. That's all I got to say. Great job, great job. Jabroni. Wait, wait, no, wait a second! What is going on here? Look at this! 
Jay Brent's leading his boys back out there and taking a cheap shot. I knew they were going to stand for this. That was blasphemy what happened. What? We need to get security or referees. We need to get somebody out here to break this up. This is a travesty of justice right here. They deserve it. Richard E. Stone with that briefcase. They deserve every second of this. To the back of El Jabroni, and Lord knows what he's got in that briefcase. Probably a couple picks. They even got Richard Stone in there with the briefcase. I love it. Shame. Oh, here comes. Wait a second. That's Sammy Diaz. Sammy Diaz making the save. Sammy Diaz, who's been out on injury. Thank God. Somebody put an end to this. Sammy with the chair. And I'll tell you what, when they saw the sides even up with that steel chair, they hit the bricks real quick. Sammy Diaz. Wow. And he's checking on Daje. I'll tell you what, I got a feeling, Slade, this thing is far from over. I feel like we're going to have uh, some more to say on this matter. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. What was that? What was that? Sammy Diaz. Oh, oh my goodness. Chair shot. What is this? Oh, and look. Oh, no, no, Sammy no. Sammy Diaz. And they've got Daje isolated. She's <laughs> all by herself. I knew it. I knew we'd seen a light. Oh, look oh, at Jay Bricks. Wait a second. The big man. Oh. oh. Jay Bricks. This is disgusting. This is yes. Absolute yes. travesty of justice. What a piece of trash Sammy Diaz turned out to be. You ask me, Jason, this is justice, sir. What a piece of garbage. Everybody in that ring right now that is standing is absolute trash yes. in my book. That was awful. That's right. These are the real goats. Are you kidding me? Yes. Cheap shots. Yes. Backstabbing. That's what I'm shots. talking about. I'll tell you, I shouldn't be surprised given there's a lawyer involved that there was backstabbing done. Sammy Diaz turns his back. I told you hiring Esquire was the best decision they made. And Garrett Holiday, oh my goodness, there's carnage everywhere. There's just, it's a, it's a massacre out here. <laughs> and El Jabroni, I mean, <laughs> El Jabroni doesn't even know what to do. He's just laying there sort of stunk disbelief. I love it. None of them saw this coming, but we got to get somebody out here to check on Daje. She took a lot of punishment here tonight. How are we going to top that, Jason? I, I don't know, but we've got wow. a long way to go. What, we talked at the Open. What a stacked card we have. Of course, headlined all. Coming up later tonight, our main event, Test of Strength Championship, hard-hitting Bobby Ocean, Dan DeMann. I know you're looking forward to that one. Oh, you know that, Jason. It's going to be a barn burner. These two have a great history together, and it's for the TOS Championship. I can't wait to see what happens. And we also have Thomas Santel's coming here tonight to issue an open challenge. I can't wait to see who accepts oh, that. I don't know who's going to be able to take on Thomas Santel, but I'm excited to see it. I'll tell you that. Of course, our main event, Test of Strength Tag Team Championships. We will crown the first champions here tonight as the Kowalski guys take on their opponents. We don't even quite know who from above the influence is going to show up here tonight. All I know is Hippie Dicky Moon's hurt, and we're going to see who's going to replace him yeah. with Moonshine McCready. Absolutely, but right now we are set for our second contest here tonight. Let's go up to Mark Adam Haggerty. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a very special six-person contest where the first person to earn a pinfall or submission will be Introducing first, being led to the ring by Honest Abe, he hails from Puerto Rico and weighs in at 220 pounds, Magnificent Marcos. Hey, you gotta give it to Honest Abe, he seems to have found a blue chipper here in Magnificent Marcos. This guy looks like a five-tool player, he is, look at, look at how this young man is put together. You know, Honest Abe's been out here scouting new talent. And this right here is a great pickup for him. Magnificent Marco has been making his rounds on the indie scene. Look at this guy. He's built like a Greek god. Absolutely. Honest Abe fancies himself a maker of champions. And I'll tell you what, he's starting from a very, very solid position. You got that right. Introducing next. Who 
is the next participant in this one. Making his way to the oh, ring, we go. being accompanied oh, by Jake Aldrin Diablo. St. John. He hails this young man Hollow, New York, has been very impressive in a very short pounds. period of time. I've been fortunate to see this guy compete Jake in many, Diablo. many places. He has a very, very bright future. You know, I've shared a locker room with this man, and I like the way he goes about business. He's a hard hitter, and he doesn't care about the law, and those two things alone make me like him. Now, of course, Aubrey right there to provide guidance when needed. Well, of course, it can't hurt having you know, someone watching your back, right? It sounds like something you would go for, for sure. Absolutely. Even if it means skirting the rules a little bit. Skirting the rules is what we do. That's what some of us do. Some of us still believe in playing by those rules, Slade. That's right. Well, you know what they say, Jason. Nice guys finish last. Well, we are going to find that out here tonight. We've got a card full of nice guys and a card full of not so nice guys. So we'll see who comes out on top if we're keeping score. Absolutely. What? Your next competitor. I tell you, what, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> We've got six guys in this ring tonight. Young guys, look at them, really sort of, a lot of them, looking to sort of make a mark here in Test of Strength to set themselves up for future opportunities within this company. Well, my money right now, Jake Diablo. Interesting. I, I figured you'd go with Marcos with the uh, guidance of Honest Abe at ringside. Well, me and Jake have a little history. No respect. No respect. You heard him. See, he knows. Making his way to the ring. It's a mutual Bye. respect. Brooklyn, at least we have. New York. This is... Me and this guy too, T.J. Howell, the privilege. Howell, the third. I mean, look at those socks. No one in the locker room dresses like that. This guy's got style. This guy's got class. You know, most importantly, he's got money. You know, there's a reason nobody else in the locker room dresses like that, but that's that's another story. T.J. and Jake, a little sharing a little glance there. These guys are friends, as I understand it. That's right. Interesting to see how that plays out as this match goes on. This is every man for himself. Well, if they're smart and they want to get to the end, you know, they'll use that alliance. And later on, of course, not our only six-man match. Later on tonight, we have a six-man gauntlet match to crown a number one contender. That's still to come here tonight, too. Well, I can't wait to see that. I'll tell you what, Making there's a lot of good talent the in that match. Who's just thinking of talent? C. He weighs in at 185 at pounds. Point the the Toxic Terror, Danny Adam. Wow, Danny Adams. Quite the interesting attire here tonight for Danny Adam, I'll tell you what. I wonder why he's wearing a gas mask. Should I be wearing or something? I mean, oh, no, I, I didn't get one. Did, did you buy one? No one told me I needed one. Well, I mean, you should always have one to be prepared. You never know. You have to have a go bag. How come no one ever told me about this go bag? You never watch 24? You always have a go bag, Slade. You never know what can 24. happen. 24. Best show in history. If it ain't me on TV, I ain't watching. That sounds exactly like Next. what I would expect you to say, Slade. You're damn right. I'll tell you what, the ring is filling up here with impressive young talent here. And this is what Test of Strength is all about. These young guys trying to make their way in the business and providing them the opportunity to do so. Oh, who's that? Speaking of impressive young talent, here's my pick to win the whole thing tonight, Slade. That's your pick? Absolutely. The freaks and the geeks? Absolutely. That sounds like something you'd say. Xander Witt, I'll tell you what, this guy has one of the brightest futures in that locker room. You can look at him, you see dollar bills all over this kid. Well, I see he switched up his look a little bit. Maybe that'll help. But for the rest, I can't speak for anything else. He speaks for the everyman. He's the guy that represents all the people who were told, you can't, you won't. Well, He's here to prove that he can and he will. And not the, the guy telling him he can and he won't, trust me. Sounds exactly like you, Slade. There is a car that needs to be moved. Uh, it is a black Honda. It is a Connecticut license plate. If you know your license plate number, you're better than me. But if you have a black Honda from Connecticut, uh, 8AD03154, I don't know. But black Honda from Connecticut, if you have one, it needs to be moved and we'd really appreciate it. Well, this and got finally! <laughs> now everybody watches for the person who gets up. That's right. It's yeah. awkward. Hold is that you, Slade? His way oh, to that sound, the it sounds like something you would do, just park wherever you want. Well, I can park wherever I want, but they haven't called woods. my name yet. And Look at this! Mountain of a man! This is Big Bear. What's that? Big that is Big Bear, Bear from the backwoods. 
from the backwoods. Yes. The they back, got fast food in the backwoods? The backwoods of Maine. That is a big, big boy. I'll tell you what. I said Xander Litt was my pick for this thing. I don't know. Big Bear's going to be a tough out in this thing. And Bear, is he stalking Aubrey? Oh my God. This is dating. I mean, she's got to run. What's she doing? And her and I, it looks like Aubrey and <laughs> Honest Dave getting into it at ringside, and she's not trying to hear it. Bears in the ring. We are getting set to go here. This is going to be an interesting match. And you notice we talked earlier about the relationship between Jake and TJ. They've sort of sectioned off their own part of the ring where they're standing together. That's right. That may Because be, they're smart. That may be a winning strategy. Take out everybody else and then may the best man win. That's right. To stay away from the big man. Well, taking out Bear is going to be a problem here. We are getting set. Referee getting ready to call for the bell, and we're going to get this thing underway. Here we go. Six-man match here in Test of Strength Wrestling. And it looks like everybody's just running their mouths right now. I don't know if anybody... Oh, you heard it first. He said he starts first. That's right. Oh, well, he's the first one oh. to eat a right hand. Come and on, referee, one. stop this. Oh, and Bear just wipes him out. Wow. Jake Marcos. Oh, Jake Marcos and Xander now. And we got all sorts of chaos going now. Jake, Bear, and Marcos now standing in the ring. Three big men. And they are staring each other down. Oh, this, this is the smart strategy that they're trying That's to right. take out the big man early. Chop him down. And they're going to send him off the ropes, but Bear not moving. Bear is a tough individual to move on and pulls them both out of the ring. Wow. What a display of strength by Big Bear. Is he going to do a uh, tope suicida here? No. Okay. Dragged out. I would have paid to see that. Now it's Danny Adam and TJ in the ring alone. We're finally down to two at least. And this has got to be what TJ wants. He's got him in the ring by himself. Well, the biggest guys are out of the ring. If you ask me, this is the ideal situation exactly. for TJ. This is the opportunity for TJ to exactly. steal the win. Let's get this thing going. Danny Adam from that shot earlier looks like he's... Uh-oh, watch out. Danny, outside oh, in. Inside out flying. to the floor. Here we go. Takes out the entire field. Well, who's still the smartest one? TJ Howell waiting in the ring patiently. Absolutely. Very smart strategy by TJ. He's not getting involved. Let everyone else beat each other up. Absolutely. You certainly can't quarrel with the strategy. There. Oh, wait a second. What's Maybe he gonna you do? can. Maybe you can. Is he going to do it? He's not going to do a dive, is he? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Smart strategy by TJ Howell. But no, not so smart to turn your back to the rest of the participants in this match as they pull him out. Come on. This is devastating. And now Danny Adam, Jake Diablo in the ring. Oh, Danny with that back kick now. Danny Adam takes out the leg. Awesome strategy here by Danny. Takes the big man down to the mat. Now wearing him out with those kicks. Comes off the ropes, drops that big leg right into the cover. Doesn't hook the leg though. And that allows Jake to kick out. Ah, uh, you see that striking prowess of Danny Adam. And now we've restored some order. We have the four Going guys outside the ring in their designated corners. Jake oh, the power oh. of Jake Diavol. Look at the power here on display. Power slam by Jake. Danny in trouble. This, fans, we should clear out Slade for the fans at home. This is one fall, one submission to a finish. This is not single elimination. No, it's not. First finish goes. Oh, wait a second. Uh -oh, Jake's two with the history. Yeah, we said they have been friends in the past, and we'll see if that's... Jake doesn't look like he's here to be friends, though. Uh-oh, he grabs oh. TJ. TJ by the little man bun there. And wait a second. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yes! Yes! That's right, baby! I stand correct. That's apparently. right! Friendship reigns supreme, but not oh. Danny Adam as he takes them both out. High flying Danny Adam again. Marcos gets the tag from TJ. And Xander gets the tag from Jake. So we got two new fresh competitors in the ring here. And this is the beauty of this kind of match. So fast paced. Guys are in, guys are out. And look at Honest oh, Dave. Oh, Abe distracting him. I'll tell you what, you don't know the strategy. What a spy buster by Marcos. With authority. 
And we talked at the beginning, this guy is your prototypical professional wrestler. You look at this guy, he's got it all, but TJ steals the tag. Marcos, he definitely got a money look, I agree with you. Marcos not happy that TJ stole the tag, but Danny Adam in on the other side too. This, fa this fast and furious pace here, they, these guys can't keep that up as long as the longer this match goes. Well, that's Danny Adams style. You're gonna wear yourself out eventually. Watch Marcos at that cheap shot from the back. Oh. And now TJ taking advantage with that shot to the back with a foot. Taking control of that toxic terror that they call Danny Adams. Oh, big scoop slam right in the middle of that test of strength logo. And now what's TJ gonna do? He's taunting him. Just taunting Danny Adams, slaps him across the face. That's this right, guy, he doesn't care. TJ Howell has no respect for anybody except maybe Jake Diavel. I wonder where he got that from. And now she, Big scoop slam by Jake now, and they have seemed to have isolated Danny Adam, and they're work, going to work on him with the double team strategy here. TJ Howell did not oh, come on, Lack, I love it. Lack of daisical insulting cover by TJ Howell only gets two, and possibly cost himself the match with that cover. I don't think so. I think he's just showing him who's the man in the ring, the man with the privilege. Big knife edge chop, and Danny Adam firing back. Trading shots in the center of the ring. These two guys do not like each other, and they are putting that on display here. Now TJ, again, goes back to the safety of that corner where Jake is. TJ Owl, he's smart. He knows what's going on here. He's not going to go over to Big Bear's Marcos? corner, I'll tell you that. Marcos drops down. What's he doing now? Marcos took exception to something, and oh, that shot by Jake. I'll tell you what, Bear... I think Marcos just went over and stole the tag. He got sick of those two working together alone. He wanted to get in on the match. And now TJ has to walk over to the other side and get in the other corner. Interesting move by Marcos there. I've never seen oh, that before. Peter hitting the ceiling. Oh, he's got him up that high vertical delayed suplex. Bad landing. The power of oh, that. Oh, Marco. Showing off, doing the push-ups, but missing the opportunity for the cover. And TJ in to break it up. I'll tell you what, if TJ hadn't broken that up, regardless of the showboating antics, he may have gotten the victory right there. You're right, but he was in there quick enough, so I guess that doesn't even matter, does it? It does not on that particular case, but if that's the attitude going forward, it could pay it, cost him the match later. He's got him up on that shoulder, though. Danny drops down. Xander makes the tag as Danny falls backwards. Oh, big clothesline by Lit. Oh, and he is lighting him up right now. Back elbow to the... Chin of Marcos now stumbles into the corner, charges in, and watch out, Jake coming in. Jake with the upset shoulder into the midsection, and TJ thinks better of it and takes a hike. He made a smart move there. And now Xander, uh oh, Bears trying to get in there on the action here. Wasn't uh -oh. tagged in, but he's unique gonna, pin. Yeah, Bears gonna break that thing up. Who's gonna stop that big man? I don't know. It's gonna be really. Oh, wait a second now. Oh, I might see all of them. This is probably smart, smart strategy on this group. All four of them go to work on Bear. Although perhaps the smartest strategy, TJ Howell on the outside, who didn't get involved at all. You're absolutely right. He's the one playing it safe, and I think playing oh. it safe in a match like this is smart. Did you see that, Slade? TJ pulled down that middle rope. That was what caused Bear to fall all the way out to the floor, thus taking him out of the match. Brilliant strategy by TJ Howell. Absolutely, that's just what they needed. And Jake with a Uranagi variation there. Oh! Throws Xander oh. Lynn. Oh, another one! And now, now reversed. Oh, look at this. This is carnage, chaos in the ring. Howell! TJ Howell! Oh! oh. Hip toss! Sit, sit out, hip toss! And Beautiful. Pops the collar, too. Look at that. It looks like he's targeting Marcos now. Oh, it's slap, just insulting him, slapping him on the back of the head. I don't think that's a smart game plan if you're TJ Howell. I agree. Just send Marcos off the ropes. Marcos with the reversal. What, uh, what's he going on there? Right a second. Honest Abe getting involved. Yeah, honest Dave. Wait, there's Aubrey. Does Aubrey grab the footer today? Oh, I think she accidentally hit TJ. Oh, Wait a goodness. second. Come on, ref. Look at Marcos has him up. What a maneuver into the cover. One, two. That is it. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, we said from the start, Marcos looked like the here is the watch, the winner, and he delivered. The magnificent I can't Marcos. believe it. I thought for sure TJ Howell was going to take that. Hold up for an interview. Well, TJ had a couple opportunities where it looked like that might be the case. 
but he sort of fell asleep at the wheel. And Marcos able to pull it out, and Honest Abe has another one. Let's go up to Deanna Ray. So Marcos, you were able to get the win tonight. How does it feel? It feels absolutely magnificent. It don't get no better than this. I knew he was going to win. Everybody knew he was going to win. Hey, you know what? Everybody, drinks ain't on me. Let's go, Marco. We out of here. All right, magnificent Marco celebrating his victory. Very, very impressive showing. That match, absolute utter chaos. But coming up, it doesn't get any better. It's a six-man gauntlet match to crown the number one contender for the Test of Strength Championship that will be decided wow. later tonight. So that That's right. Really cool. This match is going to mean everything for whoever goes off the win. It means a title shot of undeniable. You know, and my money right here, Brian Frost, if you ask me. All right, well, we're going to see how it plays out. Let's go up to the ring to Mark Adam Haggerty for the introduction. All right, yeah, folks. Our next match is a multi-person gauntlet match where it's going to start with two people in the center of this squared circle. When one of them is defeated, another will come out of that locker room. The winner of this matchup will be the number one contender to the Test of Strength Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Let's see who the first two competitors are. Well, here we go, Slade. We are getting set to find out who the first two competitors are. And whoever they are, they come into this thing at a disadvantage with four guys still in line behind them. He is from South Plainfield, Very true. New Jersey. Coming first, and gotta go the longest. At 208 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, Ray Shaz. Ray Jazz making his entrance here. We talked about an exciting young talent that is put together. Take a look at this guy. Test of strength. The future is bright here with young talent like this. This guy looks like he is ready to go, but he has a long way to go. As we mentioned, this and is a gauntlet match. let's see who our next competitor is. So we're going to find out who his first opponent is, but he would have to then sure successfully basically beat five guys to win this match. That's why the number of draw in a match like this is so important. Absolutely. If you ask me, last is the best option. Sort of like think of it as a Royal Rumble type thing. The earlier the number, the harder the road the is. Not impossible. Somerville, Massachusetts. He weighs in at 269 pounds. He is a member of the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. This is Bo Douglas. Who oh, knows? What an introduction befitting a New England Hall of Famer, Bo Douglas. Draws unlucky number two. He has to start this thing off, but I'll tell you what, I've seen Bo come through much harder situations than that. It's hard to bet against Bo Douglas tonight. Well, this man's a legend in New England, I'll tell you that. And I'll tell you what, Slade, I grew up with this guy. I've known him since high school. Uh, he's, he was the best man at my wedding, so I'm going to be a little bit biased here. It's saying I'm rooting for Bo Douglas to pull this one out, but I have seen him go through situations where you looked at him and said there's no way he could pull it out, and he has found a way because that's what Bo Douglas does, and he's looking to do it here tonight and become the number one contender. Well, you know, tonight might be his night to go up against either Dana Man or Bobby Ocean. And we'll get to who you're picking in that match in just a little bit, but... We are getting set to go. Now the rules for those of you who are unfamiliar with a gauntlet, these two men will start off the match. Once a decision, pinfall, submission, count out, disqualification, once a decision is rendered, look at that. Once the decision is rendered, the next competitor will come out and basically start an entirely new match. Absolutely. That means the shorter the bow can make this match, the better. Absolutely. Well, or Ray Jazz for that matter. It depends who you're going for. Well, who are you going for? Who's your pick to win this whole thing, Slade? By this whole thing? The Ryan whole thing. Frost. Ryan Frost. Okay. If you ask me, I'm trying to line up the easiest talent going forward. Are you saying you think Bo Douglas is the easiest path? I guess so, yeah. That. So, so I you're, am. You're taking... You're, you're not, you know, and only thing, the only reason I'm saying that is Bo's got years, you know, and that makes him experienced, yes. But Ryan Frost is young and hungry. So no respect shown by Slade to Bo Douglas, apparently. Collar and elbow tie up. Jazz with that go behind, though. 
And again, this will be very interesting. You have a young competitor in, Ryan, in Jazz, and you have a grizzled veteran in Bo Douglas. Sort of youth versus experience. We'll see which way it goes. Absolutely. I mean, if you ask me. Oh, do you hear that? He's, Bo knows he's nothing. <laughs> oh, look at Bo does know. I'll tell you what, this young man looks impressive so far. Now Bo with the backslide. Oh, oh, wow. Over the top by Jazz into the arm drag takeover. And now he's waiting. Has him another arm drag. Has Bo rattled. Beautiful drop kick. I don't think Bo expected this. Oh, now reverse. Oh, straight right hand. Oh. The Bo KO right there almost. Jazz is rattled. Oh. Bo holds on to him, pulls him back and went for that shot again. Oh, beautiful German. And Jazz has him tied up quick. Bo, Bo taps, Bo Douglas taps out. No. What an upset. This. Absolute upset. Ray Jazz moves on. I did not expect that. Me neither. Got I was hoping Bo Douglas was going on, but I guess not. Who's next though? I feel like Bo took that lightly perhaps. And what's Bo? Oh, Bo, very upset. Oh. Well, can you? Bo, not taking that loss very well. We need to get the next competitor out here, but Bo is going to. Wait a second. Five star Jace, apparently on, the next Bo. one out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Bo Douglas has been eliminated. Your next competitor, hailing from anywhere but here, weighing in at 220 pounds. Five-star Chase. Oh, five-star Chase. This man's another one who's been in the business for a while. Yeah. Spent a lot of his time as part of a tag team, though. He's really sort of recently broken out on his own as a singles competitor and done very well so far. A win here tonight will put him in line for a singles championship, which would be a big win. Absolutely. Oh, it's Bo. Bo is not happy. It looks like Bo's hanging out around here after some cheap shots. And now Jace in full control in large part thanks to Bo Douglas. And Ray Jazz now trying to get his bearings after taking that beating. And now that shot from midsection trying to create some separation. Comes off the ropes and Jace cuts him off. Beautiful drop kick right to the face. Five star Jace is no jabroni. He knows exactly what he's doing in there. No, jabroni was out here earlier. Oh, you're a funny guy too now. That was the Great. first match. You, 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 I know El Jabroni is. You must have got hit in the head a little bit. Wow, what a knee. Speaking of which, Jace takes him down to cover. But again, and they talk about this a lot, Slade, but you see it so much. The veterans, the guys who are out there, they're always hooking a leg, and you see some of these guys come out here, and they make that mistake, and you've got to wonder, some of these close, close two counts, if that could make the difference. Oh, absolutely. And Jace now not taking advantage of the opening. He has the opportunity that Bo Douglas gave him. Sort of taking his time, not staying on top of Jazz here. Jazz up and over. Big oh. splash in the corner. This kid's athleticism off the charts. One of the first offense I've seen from him. T-Bone suplex into the cover, too. You mean aside from where he tapped out a New England Hall of Famer five minutes ago? You got all the answers, Jason. Somebody has to out here. Kick to the midsection by Jace. Has him hooked up, going for that package pile driver. But no, Jask fires out. Wow. Oh, over the top. Oh, what athleticism. Beautiful spinning heel kick right into the cover. No way to it. That's it. Five star Chase has wow. been eliminated. This young man already has eliminated Bo Douglas, five star Jace. Your next competitor. He might go to distance. He only has three more guys to beat at this point. I can't believe it. Dominic De Niro. But the road gets no easier as Dominic De Niro right in and hits that drop kick, sending him back to the corner. He's looking to take advantage quickly here. That's right. Ray's been in there since the beginning. Dominic's fresh, so you know. Absolutely excellent strategy by De Niro, wasting no time. And that's what that's the mistake that Jace made out here. Took his time, left openings, and Jazz was able to take advantage of him. But now you've got De Niro out there now getting distracted by the official. And I'll tell you what, Ray Jazz, regardless of the outcome of this match, this young man has opened eyes here tonight. Definitely. It's not every day you can say you tap out a Hall of Famer that quickly.
two veterans of the ring. Absolutely. And now you hear that chop thunderously echo throughout the building here. And what a beautiful facility we have here in Northampton Slade. It's amazing here. Packed crowd. I want to thank all the fans for coming out. Standing room only here tonight. The support for Test of Strength is amazing. You can't blame these people. They put on amazing shows though. Wow, what a clothesline. Into the right, into the cover too. And I heard at least like two people say they were here to see you too. Me? Yes. Wow. Well, I feel a little special now. I mean, they were the they were the cops trying to deliver a warrant earlier, but what? Cops? They didn't catch up to you yet. Maybe I need to get out of here. I thought you might have to. I, th I thought they already spoke to you. Sorry. I'm gonna... You'll be stuck here by yourself. And look at this interesting maneuver here, being applied by De Niro and Jazz. Again, we talk all the time about how you cut off that oxygen. For a guy like Ray Jazz, who's been in through two matches already, that oxygen is at a premium. Very good strategy by De Niro to try to take it away from him. And that back elbow drives him down to the canvas. Looks oh, the leg. Kick, kicks out again. Did you, did you catch that, though, Slade? He not only had the cover, but he put his forearm across the throat, too. Well, he's, you know, no one's got to keep him down. This guy's already taken out two guys. He's no one to, you know, mess around with. This guy's got talent, obviously. Absolutely. Maybe I should change my pick. Got to give credit to De Niro. He's wasting no time. Dominic De Niro going right into a cover every time he executes. But now, as I say that, he gets distracted by the official. Ah. Oh. And this Ray might be Jazz, the advantage for Ray, though. Ray Jazz able to get back to his feet now, but eats another knife edge chop right to the chest. Reversal by Jazz. And what's he going to do? Took a second, and I think that allowed De Niro to recover, but Jazz gets his feet. Drops that shoulder. Wow. Drives it into the midsection. Goes up and over. Whoa! Oh, into a backslide. Into a backslide, too, and that is it! I can't believe it! He's taking out three guys! This guy is on Dominic fire! De Niro has been eliminated. Next! Oh my God! I did not see this coming tonight. What an absolute eye-opener! New Jersey, Wayne Yeah, well now look is coming out. Corey Dillinger. One. What Corey a big, dangerous Dillinger. man making his way to the ring right now. I'll tell you what, this road for Ray Chaz, when he drew number one, he had to know the road was going to be really hard. But now, when you lift your head up and you look into the eyes of Corey Dillinger, you got to wonder what goes through his head. You know it's going to be in his head. He wants to win oh. this championship. Good strategy here. Gets on the big man's back and tries to take away his oxygen. That's right. So he's going to do everything in his power to win this match to get that chance to do so. You got to do better than that, young boy. Oh, oh you heard him. Dillinger challenging him, charges in, Ray out of the way, pushes him into the corner and jumps on his back again. Trying to take the big man down to the canvas where he has no size advantage. And he's going up and over, sunset flip attempt, Dillinger, can he block it? Oh. Goes for the punch, he gets nothing but canvas. The big man. Oh, oh my God, the power, Corey Dillinger. Cut him off in mid-air. Wow. Corey Dillinger just absolutely asserting his power advantage here. And I'll tell you what, Ray Jazz taken so much punishment through the early part of this match, has already defeated three competitors, including a Hall of Famer. But now he looks up and sees perhaps the biggest man in this match, Corey Dillinger. And he's having a hard time at this point. I'm having a hard time believing the power. I mean, he's throwing him around the ring like a rag doll. And he's picking him up now, trying to put this thing away. And again, same strategy applies for Dillinger. Wow! <laughs> Just to My God! Look at the pain etched across the face of Ray here. Dillinger right into the cover, gets the two, and only a two. But you gotta think, same strategy applies to Corey that we talked about here earlier. The faster he can put Jazz away, the better for him. There are still two more competitors left to enter including your pick, Ryan Frost. Absolutely. And Frost coming out last gives him all the advantage. But my God, if I have seen one thing tonight, it's that race, no joke. And Tory Dillinger, the power on this man is unbelievable. I'll tell you what, he might be the favorite at this point, but Jazz out of the way. No one home. And now right over the top, nice move. Oh, sliding clothesline. Goes right to the cover, referee was out of position. But only got a one count anyway. Neckbreaker. Right. Toss the three feet in the air. 
And now standing, Moonsault! Oh my God! What a maneuver by Jazz and the cover to it! Oh! The power of Corey Dillinger just tossed him away like a child. You're talking about breath and air being a precious thing. I can't believe this guy's still pulling off moves like this this far into the match. And now Jazz going to that second turnbuckle on the inside, and he takes him down. But Dillinger trying to roll through. Rolls back up now. That wasn't enough. No, oh, look at the power of Corey Dillinger. Uh-oh, what's he going to do? Oh, just oh. deposits him to the canvas. What a maneuver. What is he going to do now? He's almost like a, a cat playing with a mouse in there right now. That's right. He knows he's got the advantage oh. in size. And Jazz with that perhaps desperation elbow to the back of the head. Breaks free of the hold. Dillinger! Oh, oh duck the shot. You saw that? Oh he's unconscious. Gosh. That was a knockout shot. He, he might be out on his feet. Oh! oh. Good night. Two, three. That is it. I tell you what, I don't know if I see Ray anybody Jazz being Corey Dillinger. has been point. eliminated. That was an impressive Jump showing. Editor from Buffalo, New York. Low. He weighs in at 220 pounds. And there's my pick to win it all right here. Frost. Ryan Frost, baby. Phil, we misspoke earlier. This is not six men in this match. There are eight men in this match. Oh. And a little bit of history between these two. It was actually Corey Dillinger who suffered a defeat at the hands of Ryan Frost. That's how Ryan Frost got into this match here tonight. You got it. But did it with a low blow. So the question now becomes... Oh, you can see Dillinger's already got heat right here. Yeah, you can see... He's fired up. The question now becomes straight up man-to-man. -man. Can Frost do it again? Yeah, we're about to find out right here. He's your pick to win. And, of course, still waiting in the wings. We have Jiggy Sosa and Fox Vineyard who are also in this match and waiting their opportunity. So whoever wins this match has to go through those two guys as well. Unbelievable. And the crowd here, not big fans of Ryan Frost, apparently. And Frost, Frost, I don't know what he's doing now. Trying to trade shots with Corey Dillinger, not the best strategy. And look at these two big men in the middle of the ring just trading heavy shots. They're wearing each other out. The slugging blows back and forth. I, I think Frost might have punched himself out there. He looked like he ran out of gas in the middle of that exchange. Looks like he's on Dream Street. He's absolutely, those heavy shots by Dillinger, and oh, he pulls down that knee pad. Watch out here, what's he gonna go for? Sends Frost off the ropes. Frost holds on, smart strategy, and drops down, and gets out of the That's a smart move. Got out of harm's way there. Excellent strategy by Ryan Frost, very smart. Corey Dillinger looks frustrated, and you gotta wonder if that's part of the strategy here, is keep the big man frustrated, get him off of his game or keep the big man moving and tire him out. But Dillinger's not falling for that, he's staying in the ring. Yeah. And just as I say that, he goes out to the See? floor. Good call by you, Slade, you saw that one coming. That's right, he baited him out. Oh, but apparently the strategy working okay as he levels him with a chop and now he's right hand to the face. You might think Frost wants to get back in the ring now. I think Frost wants to get out of here, look at him. Eats the canvas there as Corey Dillinger in full control of this situation. The power of Corey is unbelievable. I mean, Ryan uh, is no small man and he's just tossing him oh. around. I'll tell you what, these two big guys get a little too close to our broadcast area for my comfort. Oh. Right. I I'll stick me in a box or something over here. What do we do if we get a double count out here? Do we, the next two competitors come out and they win? Whoever wins wins That's the a good question. I don't know. I've, I've never seen that, but if these two guys are both counted out, then they're both eliminated. Oh, oh my God, what a shot. Did you hear the sound? The, the sickening sound oh. of Corey Dillinger's back hitting that steel post. Disgusting thud. And now Frost trying to get him back to his feet, get him in the ring so he can get the pinfall. Oh, pull, pull him, him back, back out. All right, you've got to question that strategy, Slade. Why throw him back in the ring and break the count? Why not just go in the ring yourself and get him counted out? Maybe he feels like he's got more room around here, you know, to really take the run if he's got to. And of course, he starts swinging. He's got to be able to duck and dodge. 
Got this referee in there blocking them all over the place. I don't blame him. I gotta wonder if for Frost it's more important to win the match or to take out Corey Dillinger. I think Frost is here to prove a point that the first time wasn't a fluke. It certainly seems that way. Perhaps a little chip on his shoulder. I'm sure he's heard the guys in the locker room talking that it was a fluke, a cheap shot. He couldn't do it straight up. Looks like he came out here to prove that point. That's why I picked Ryan Frost to go all the way. I mean, look at him. Well, we're going to find out how far he can go. He's got Dillinger oh, in the real bad way right now. And we talked earlier about the lower back and this, the intelligence of assaulting the lower back, especially when the competitor is bigger and has a lot of weight to carry. Absolutely. Frost not endearing himself to the crowd here in Northampton. Ooh. I don't know if you guys can hear that at all, but I don't think I need to repeat that. I don't think you do, Jason. I heard a few people chanting that to you as you walked in the building today. I thought they liked you around here. Well, you're a real funny guy, Jason. I really appreciate the jokes. Well, let me tell you something. You know, you're going to show me some respect by the time this show's over. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you, Slade, because I, I do have to tell you I'm not going to lie. That's probably not going to happen. Well, we'll see about that. We've only just started. You right. will show me respect. Well, Corey Dillinger now trying to get back to his feet. Ryan Frost, again, we talk about wasting time so much here tonight. And Frost is doing just that now, and that's allowed Dillinger to catch his breath now, executing those big, heavy ham hocks to the midsection and firing off to the top of the head. I'll tell you what, one shot from Dillinger seems to have Frost rattled every time. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> he takes him over, and he's going to go right into the cover here. This could be it. Frost doesn't even know where he is. Look at him. But he got the ropes. Oh, got I the guess I'm wrong. Let's bring awareness right there. He got the shoulder up and got the rope, so he broke it up twice. He's played possum. And the crowd here saying that that was a slow count. They're disagreeing with the cadence of the official. Oh, back elbow as Frost charges in. He eats one. Close line by Dillinger. He's now in control, challenging him to come up. Dillinger has him up. Frost drops down the back. Oh, beautiful. Belly to belly by Dillinger. I don't know if you saw that, the instincts of Dillinger, he ducked the clothesline from behind. He felt it coming. It's like he's got spider senses. Unbelievable, but still cannot put Frost away. I'm surprised Frost is still standing. I mean, Corey Dillinger's hitting him with all the stuff he's got. These moves are unbelievable. It is very impressive that he's still on his feet given the punishment he's taken. Oh. What an elbow by Dillinger, but he stumbles coming out of the corner. And now goes off the other side. Oh! Knockout shot! That's got to do it. He's out. He's out on his feet. Now he's not on his feet anymore. Dillinger, cover him. Good night, sweet Prince. That is it. Now what? What am I going to do now? I'll tell you what. I think you heard that shot has been from across the street. Two competitors Your next left. We'll see who's our next. And Frost back to his feet. Coming straight out of the north end. How's he standing Here's right now? I have no idea. The city, Shiggy Sosa. And watch out. Frost has that kendo stick. Oh, kendo right. stick. Under the jaw. Oh, and he's wearing out Dillinger. <laughs> it's like my man Ryan Frost. And it looks like he softened him up for Jiggy Sosa, who's been announced as the next competitor. Oh, wow! And here comes Jiggy Sosa. Here we go. Another young up and coming talent here. And the crowd seems to be in favor of Jiggy Sosa, but I'll tell you what, he is undersized. Perhaps that attack by Frost. That's it, but Dillinger's been working. That's what I'm saying. He, of course, he just felt that kendo stick, but still kicks out at one. Smart strategy, going to work on the back. Jiggy Man, well, Sosa look, needs look, to hit and run here. Look at the, the size difference, though. I mean, Dillinger's got easy, like a couple hundred pounds on this guy. I tell you what, the official getting into it with the fans at ringside needs to focus on the match here. Oh, oh, double stomp to the back. Can that be it? Right into the cover. Two. No, Jiggy needs to put this away quick. The longer he allows Dylan, I'm sorry, Dillinger to get it to his feet, get back to that vertical base where he can exploit this power advantage, it's definitely to Sosa's disadvantage here. You're absolutely right. He's got to keep Dillinger on the ground if he's got any chance of getting on top of this match. Yeah, what he does not want to do is what he's doing right now and getting a close quarters combat. 
with Corey, and that, that's why. Exactly that's right. Why. We've seen what happened to that already. Yeah, we saw it just a moment ago. Oh, strike, double knees to the chin. Chopping down the big man, though. This is where Sosa needs to keep him. Right into the cover. Perhaps took a little too long to get him flat on his back. It's going to take a lot more than that to put down Corey Dillinger. Well, the first pinfall attempt was a one. He's got him down to a two now, so he's obviously taken something out of Dillinger at this point. And we know Frost took something out of Dillinger now, so Dillinger comes in with an exam. We also now know that Fox Vineyard will be the final competitor to enter this gauntlet. Fox Vineyard is another man who's no joke. Absolutely, that man has traveled, he's competed on Ring of Honor. This guy is well known around the country. Absolutely. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you, Slade, he's also a little mentally not all there. Well, there's no doubt about that. But that kind of, that kind of unstableness is what makes him, you know, a top tier talent, if you ask me. So soft, the ropes, oh! Sky high, I was put him through the ceiling. That's it. Sosa is done, we're gonna, no, he kicks out. How did Sosa kick out of that? I have no clue. I mean, he had him 10 feet in the air. Unbelievable, the heart shown by Jiggy Sosa to kick out of that. But Dillinger gotta be wondering, what do I have to do to put this guy away now? Oh, big clothesline. Dillinger nailed him with that one. And now, looks like it went for sort of a reverse knife edge there. I don't know if he got all of it. He's got this move again, here he goes, it's gotta oh, be over. That's it, that's it. It's gotta be over, what's he wasting time for, pin him. Took too long to get into the cover, doesn't hook the leg. And Sosa just able to kick out. I'll tell you what, this is one of those weird spots because Sosa is the fresher of the two competitors, but I say he's still the underdog in this situation. Well, of course, the impact on the moves by, from Corey Dillinger is like being in a car wreck. Here he comes again, he knocked out right yeah. Frost with this. Oh, he went for it again. Oh! Sosa slides out and delivers that straight kick right to the side of the head. Has him up, long blower. One wow. more by Sosa into the cover. That's he it. it. He took the big man out. Sosa Corey has to win the final has match. Been eliminated. I'll tell you what, Dillinger, Ladies nothing ahead of his head about the participant. That guy here tonight. About to make his way to the ring from West Troy, New York, weighing 250 pounds. Oh. Firework oh. Fox Vineyard. I'm not cleaning that up. I'm just telling you right Look now. Look at this. Out of my notepad. This is a mess. This is a, I got souvenirs now. They don't pay me enough for this. I'm not a clean up man. Take a look at that large piece of humanity right there that goes by the name of Fox Vineyard. But while he's doing his entrance, Jiggy Sosa is climbing to the top rope. Cross body block. No, nope. not Fox Vineyard. Let me ask you a question, Slade. Go ahead. How, oh, look at the Samoan oh! drop. Turn it into a Samoan drop slash neck breaker. That's amazing. I'll tell you what, how would you feel if you're walking down the streets of New York City and you take a left turn into an alley and Fox Vineyard is standing there? I'll tell you exactly what I'd do. I'd turn right around and walk away as fast as possible. And you would hope you were wearing dark pants, I assume. Absolutely. Jiggy Sosa just absolutely rocketed into that turnbuckle and fires back out. And Vinya says, you know what time it is. I think he's looking to put this one away quickly. He must know what time it is. Let's find out. Charges into the corner, but gets oh. the boots up. Sosa comes out, go for that long ball again. again. He hit it. He hit it again. It's got to be over. That's it. Do it. No, Vinya kicks out. Vinya's fresh. That wasn't enough to take out Fox Vinya. I'll tell you what, it looked like it was. Whichever one of these two men gets the three count will become the number one contender for the Test of Strength Championship. You gotta wonder what it's gonna take, you know? I'll tell you what, you gotta wonder, you wanna know who I wonder uh, about is Toto Loco. Because he was the number one contender. He won that match. He's not here tonight. He's not taking his opportunity tonight. And we have another match for the ring right now to crown a new number one contender. You so know, you're right. If you're right. Toto Loco, what do you think about that situation? I feel like I got screwed. He'd be well. You'd have to. You'd have to agree with him on that regard, though, because he won the number one contender spot. Well, absolutely, you do. You know, you come in, you win a battle royal, but then all of a sudden they tell you that you're not going to be at the next show for what? Not only not at the next show, but also somebody's going to be competing for the number one contender spot you already have. I'll tell you what, that would really piss me off. Vineyard drops down. Oh, oh my God! Knocked the teeth out of his mouth. 
Oh! Vineyard charges in, he ducks the close. I didn't know one, that's it! Three that's strikes, you're it. out! Get Pay him, him kid! Get the cover, Jiggy, cover him, cover him! Take, oh, uh oh, he's taking too much time. He looks like he wants to go up top. This guy can fly, and he looks like he's gonna try to put away Fox Vineyard from the top rope. What's he I, gonna do? I think this is a big missed opportunity. One top rope! He hit it! Can he get it? Two! Three. That's it! Jiggy Sosa is going to fight the champion! Ladies and gentlemen, what an unbelievable performance and the new by number Jiggy one Sosa. contender to the test of strength wow. heavyweight championship, Jiggy Sosa! Undersized against Corey Dillinger and Fox Vineyard, Jiggy Sosa overcomes all the odds, hits that spot Mass. on, and he is the new number one contender for the Test of Strength Championship. And you gotta wonder if Bobby Ocean and Dan DeMann are sitting in the back watching the monitor right now. Of course they are. You know, they're gonna wanna know after their match, who's gonna be the man they gotta fight, you know? Undeniable is no joke of a show. It's Test of Strength's next big gig. And if you're gonna be the first, you know, number one contender, you don't wanna be Toto loco which we can verb that now, I think. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to hear what Toto Loco thinks about the events of here tonight, but we are going to go up. I think Deanna Ray momentarily is going to try to speak to Jiggy Sosa, and I think the fans would love to hear from this talented young man who is now the number one contender. So, Jiggy, you were able to overcome two opponents twice your size tonight. Congratulations on your win. Thank you, thank you. I got over them because I got heart. I'm the heart of the city and the number one contender. So whoever comes out on top tonight with the title, you're gonna see why there ain't no love in the heart of a city. Yeah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited because this next contest is a tag team fatal four-way match scheduled for one fall. Or maybe four, I honestly don't know, we'll see. I feel like Slade, we've spent the whole night putting over impressive young talent, and we're going to see a lot more of that here tonight. Introducing. Well, of course, we got a, a tag match coming up, and not just a tag match, a fatal four way tag match. Absolutely, featuring some very impressive young talent. From the great state of Maine. Oh, the Maine State Posse. And I'll tell you why, about the Maine State Posse. For a couple of young guys, these guys are already veteran status. They've been all over. They've held every championship there is to hold in the New England area. This team is a team that is going to make waves on a national level. Well, they have to overcome the odds tonight. Absolutely. Because this match is stacked with talent. You know, I've seen the Bellow Twins. I've seen the congregation. I've seen the Filthy Family. We're in for a treat tonight. And we talked about the fact that the success these guys have had. And don't think for a second that doesn't put a target on their backs with these other four teams, the other three teams coming out looking to make a name for themselves. Absolutely. There you see Aiden Agro on your left and Danger Kid on your right. And this may be one of the most impressive young teams I've yeah, seen in a while. Is that a buoy? It's a buoy, yeah, they're for me. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, could have brought me some lobster. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, did you want to see it? They, they're delivering me food. Did you want something? Your next team. Oh. I, I, I just assumed you were, you were good. I didn't order anything for you. Uh, what a guy, you know? Leave me hanging. And now the Main State Posse awaiting the first of their three opponents to make their way to the ring. Making their way to the ring at a total combined weight of 495 pounds, Ty Shine, High Voltage Omar, the Bello Twins. It is good. Now, we should point out they're not identical twins. Could have fooled me. But very close. I can tell them apart. Who's who? Well, Ty is the one wearing the long tights. They're not going to be able to pull off twin magic wearing different outfits, though. Well, how do you know Ty's the one in the long tights? I can't tell them apart. You can't tell them apart? Absolutely not. That's that's Ty Shiner with the shorts, then, right? No, nope, Ty Shiner's the one with the long, long pants on. High voltage Omar with the shorts. Next. Oh, we're in trouble. 
Well, you're in trouble. That's why I got you here. And now we await the third team to enter the fray. I believe. And you're going to have to fill me in on these Hope guys. Hope about to make their way down the aisle. They are from the van down by the river. And weighing these guys at a total uh, combined weight of 410 pounds. These two men are the definition Stevens, of hardcore. Dirtbag Tower. This man's big. He's got all the power in the world. You've got Dirtbag Dan. And this is a man who literally has total disregard for his own well-being. Can you imagine how he feels about his opponents? Oh! Wow! You almost hit me with that. What was that? So if I call him Dirtbag, you won't get offended. No, absolutely not. You can't just put that in a lake and let it float. All right, well, Dan, all right then. Danger Kid has uh, left his wow. his flag and his buoy. You wanted to see it, so there you go. I don't want to see this. Let's throw it in the water. You in charge they that. I don't want to hold this. Weight. What am I going to do? He's watching these flags. 1047 pounds. Brother Greatness and Dashing T. Weatherford. The Congregation. Now, I've seen these men work their way through the tournament. You know, they defeated so many teams. These two are great. They got great chemistry together. I'm a big fan of the congregation. I Get would, this thing out of here. I would not expect you to be a fan of the congregation. I'm Everyone likes a little juke and jive, Jason. I'd imagine you would be sort of like the pillar of salt if you were to shake hands with them. I want to say I was going to shake their hand. I was going to say I respect their talent. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about the congregation? These two men have come up. They've gone through three matches already in this tag tournament, you know? For the fans not familiar, why don't you give why don't you fill them in on their names? Congregation, what do you mean? The guys, what are their names? The congregation! Well, you were filling them in on their names. I I was looking for your expertise. You know, they got taken out, but they went through three guys, three teams in that tournament. And I was impressed each and every time. And now here they are. And you got to remember, the person who gets the win here in this next match, they're obviously going to be top contenders for the tag championships, I would imagine. You know, we don't have number one contenders, but you have to imagine whoever's going to win this gauntlet match here, this fatal four-way tag match, is going to be up in line for the best thing ever, and that's the tag team championships. Debuting tonight. All right. Well, since you chose not to enlighten the fans at home, allow me to do so, Slid. The congregation made up of Brother Greatness and Dashing D, the person in shorts, Brother Greatness, the man in long pants, Dashing D. Oh, thanks. And they are electrifying the crowd here in Northampton. We got, uh, we've got a buoy here. We're covered in confetti. It's all chaos is breaking loose here tonight. Hey, you got me stumbling over myself over here. And now we're going to see who starts off this match. Little co little, the congregation a little bit getting into it here. Oh, and now all chaos starts. This is why you knew this was coming. Oh. And the mainstay posse and the filthy family have cleared house a little bit, and now they're staring at each other. Oh, they're going to work together. Wow. Apparently. Oh, no, the mainstay posse. I didn't see that lasted too long. Yeah, the mainstay posse suckered him in there. And watch out, because Aiden Agro and Danger Kid will fly. And it looks like that might be what they have on their minds. Oh, watch out, watch out. Oh, the world. oh cut off by the filthy family. The Bellow Twins catch their breath here. You also know they have different tattoos, right? Oh! Wow! Dirtbag Dan flying over the top, taking everybody out. Now watch they out from behind him, though. Oh, it's big Cal Stevens swept him aside, but drops down. Dash oh. and D. He pulls down the ropes, and now D's going to fly. Oh, it's a flying D! Oh, flying D! Brother Greatness back in the ring. What was that, Tyshine? 
That is, that is Ty Shine, yes. Oh, I got a right? Yes. Oh, look at that, something on top! Oh. And look at the athleticism of Ty Shine landing on his feet! I can't believe Omar landed on his feet! Oh, oh. Ty Shine? That's Ty Shine. Oh. Long pants, Ty Shine. It's not that hard, Slade. Pants. Oh, watch out, here comes Omar, but oh, the man's State Posse! Cut him off! Took him out! Impressive. Maybe I will watch their buoy. Give me this thing. Baby got booty. Booty. That's Sorry. right. <laughs> now the main, now it looks like we're getting a little semblance of order here as the main state posse and the Bellow Twins have each taken to a corner. Now Aiden Agro tagged into the contest. High voltage Omar in a bad way right now. Oh, what do we got here? A little piggyback action. It oh! was sent on. Wow, what a maneuver. Double sent on by the main state posse. Aiden Agro, the legal man, right into the cover. Two. Oh, kick out by Omar. And the congregation right here in front of us trying to get their bearings. Big right hands now by a high voltage Omar. Oh. By the way, Omar's the one with the shoulder tattoo if you need another way to tell him apart. Oh, thanks. Listen, if I want any help, oh. I'll be sure to ask for it. Dirtbag Dan tagged himself in. Oh. Dirtbag Dan called everybody out. Well, Big Cat Stevens called, uh, what do you call High Voltage Omar, a ricochet wannabe. Wow, can't believe that. Trash talking here. Oh, tag made. Oh, it's bringing in greatness. That is Brother Greatness making his way into the ring. Giving up some size to Dirt Bag Dan, but using his speed and quickness. Oh! Is that a Shote palm strike? I think so, that was amazing. And Brother Greatness off the ropes. Look at the wheelbarrow here. Oh! Big cow! What a shot! And I'll tell you what, Slade, this match not officially a number one contenders match for the Test of Strength Tag Team Champions we're gonna crown here tonight. But you gotta think whoever wins this match is gonna go a long way with General Manager Alex Rojas to determine who gets that first shot and whoever wins tonight. Of course, I mean, obviously anybody who's gonna come up, you know, in this match, you got four teams. If you beat all three of these teams, then you obviously deserve to be in the running for that tag team championship shot. Absolutely, and of course, like coming up next, immediately following this contest, the Test of Strength Heavyweight Championship will be decided We've talked so much in parts about this match. Hard hitting Bobby Ocean defending that title against Dan DeMint. I can't wait for that one. I'm the most excited about that match of all, but let me tell you, these two have oh, such a history. Springboard moonsault, nobody home. Greatness Brother going greatness. Attack. He's got Omar. Interesting there. I mean, Ty Shine. Interesting as greatness went a longer way than he could have to just tagged his own partner. Wow, drop kick. Now, I'll tell you what, Slate, what comes into play here a little bit is that this is a single elimination, single pinfall match. So if your team isn't in the ring, you can't yeah. win. Well, that's right. Well, that kind of makes things interesting, if you ask me. Aiden Agro now asserting control here. He's got Ty Shine in trouble, and he is where he does not want to be, and that's in the corner of the Main State Posse. Perhaps the best double team offense in New England, these two. Oh, He's wow. stopped right there. Into the cover, and bit, dead, bad, dirt bag Dan in to break up the pinfall. Now leave it to dirt bag Dan. Well, it's a smart strategy, like I said, one fall. So if he gets the pinfall here, the match is over, and they're out of their opportunity. He's gonna do whatever he takes, then, obviously. And Dan gets the tag from Danger Kid, and now they're doing the wheelbarrow as well. Oh, it's a set on. of their own. It's almost like they're going move for move. Did he just tag in? I believe he just tagged in the Main Street Posse. Main State Posse. I have no idea Wait what's, a going, what's on going on here. Beautiful move by High Voltage Omar. A little twin magic. Oh, they pull the double switch. The double switch. A little twin magic. Dirtbag Dan not aware that they're wearing different outfits. Right into the cover. High volt. That is High Voltage Omar. Oh, inside Cradle. He's got him. Oh. That's it. Two was all he could get, though. 
McDay, what's he gonna do here? That front face lock, but he's in the corner. Looks like we got a tag. Brother Greatness tagged himself in, I think. No, apparently the official didn't see it. Oh uh -oh. no, what do we got here? And now the Bellow Twins have the double suplex locked in. Oh my god, no, oh, another one! Oh, here comes Aiden Agro. Oh, oh, he's hanging, he's pulled the strap down! Dash and D gonna get in on the action. This is like a, oh my, I, I don't even know what to call this. What's going on here? This is like a 12-way suplex. What the greatness gonna do, he's calling to the Lord! Suplex. Here we go. An eight-way suplex, we'll see if they can pull it off. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I think high voltage Omar took a little bit of punishment there. He couldn't get dirt back in all the way over. That might, that might be good for Dan though. Yeah, he didn't take as much impact as everyone else did. I'll tell you, this, this is crazy. There's just there's robes and buoys everywhere. There's confetti. What a night we're having here already in Northampton. Chaos. We haven't even gotten to our championship match. Right? I feel like I'm sitting at the marina over here. Dashing D with the kick to the midsection, holding him up. Brother Greatness gonna climb to the top rope. Neckbreaker coming. Oh! No! Neckbreaker splash, beautiful tag team maneuver into the cover. A Nagro breaks it up. And what are they going for here? I talked about the tag team precision of the Main State Posse, and now you're gonna see it here. I think they, they had the best tag moves. Long blower. Set time. Oh, another set time. Right across the knees too. There's no give to those knees. There's so many variations. But watch out, Dirtbag Dan throws Danger Kid out of the ring. And now Big Cal Stevens with that shot to the midsection. Look at the tag team execution by the Filthy Family. What a close! I turned them inside out. Oh, now Danger Kid returning the payback. Right, they're dashing D. This is just, this chaos everywhere. Nobody's tagging anymore. Oh no, watch out. Dashing D outside to the floor. Oh! Freak the flyer miles for Dashing D. The Wait, Bellow the Twins. Bellow Twins. The Bellow Twins standing in the ring and we've got Brother Greatness on the top rope again. What's he gonna do? Oh, they caught oh, him. Oh no. They caught him. They got him up. Oh, double it's... cutter. Wow. Good double night. cutter into the cover, double pin. That's it, the Bellow Twins! Wow, the Bellow Twins get it! Bellow Twins won. Here are your winners, Ty Shine, High Voltage Omar, the Bellow Twins! What a victory for the Bellow Twins here tonight in Northampton! And you gotta think that puts them squarely in line for a shot at those tag team titles that we're gonna crown here tonight. Oh, yeah, I and mean, I'm sure that above the influence, the Kowalski guys were fast day watching on the monitor. Well, you gotta wonder, we still don't know what we're gonna get from above the influence tonight. We know they're in the finals, but we've been told there is an injury to the hippie, and I don't know what's gonna happen with that. That's right, I heard he was knocked out. KO'd, I heard. Yeah, KO'd, that's what, that's what I was told. I did try to get more information from the medical staff, nothing given. Let's hear Deanna Ray is going to speak to the Bellow Twins. Let's see what they have to say. So congratulations, guys, Kyle. on your win tonight. You were able to overcome three different teams of competitors. How do you feel? Uh, we feel great right now. We beat three worthy tag teams. Any one of those teams could be the number one contenders for the TOS tag team titles. But you're looking at me and my brother Omar. We are now the number one contenders for the tag team titles. Congratulations. Omar, do you have anything to say? We keep saying it. Everyone knows we're good singles. Tag team, we make twinning look good. And uh, this is notice for SWB, J. Freddy, or if it's Moonshine and his new partner, you're looking at the new TOS Tag Team titles because Twin it never looks so good. Congratulations, guys. A successful performance here tonight. What an effort. And like I said, not officially a number one contenders match, but you've got to think they're right in line now. But it is time, Slade. It is time to have the test of strength heavyweight championship decided. 
This is the definition of a big match. It is hard hitting Bobby Ocean, one on one with Dan Demand. A lot of bad blood in this. Match. That's right, bad blood that's gone on for years. And tonight we're going to find out not only is the bad blood going to get resolved, but who's going to come out champion. And as bad as Dan wants that title, I think he'd take particular enjoyment in taking it off of Bobby Ocean. It is time for the heavyweight championship. Let's go up to the ring for our introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the first half of tonight's massive main event? Well, here we go. Armed lumberjacks. They've got weapons. We talked about the bad blood between these two men. They want to make sure that there is a decisive winner here tonight. Nobody can run and hide. Somebody is going to walk out of here the rightful test of strength heavyweight champion. And hopefully these lumberjacks at ringside will help make that happen. Oh, they keep their weapons away from us. Oh. And more people continuing to file out more lumberjacks. Who's that last guy? Oh, I don't know. Who's this? I don't know. Is that another lumberjack? Well, he's making his way out. And more now officials coming out here. This guy's got, looks like he's got dump chucks. He's getting in the ring. What's he doing? Scissors? What is this? Slate, do you know anything about this? Oh, this is so weird. Oh! oh! It's Dan the Man making his entrance. No one saw it coming. I'll tell you what, Dan is a showman. No doubt about that. And he is focused tonight. Look at his eyes. That's right. Cheer for this man. coming tonight with one mission, one goal, and that is to become the test of strength heavyweight champion. But That's there, right. You heard it, Jason. Cheer for him. There is a man about to make his way to the ring whose sole purpose tonight, the only thing he came here tonight to do, was to put an end to Dan Demand. And in the process, retain the test of strength Heavyweight Championship, and here comes. Oh, he's got his own lumberjack. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Rick Raycon. He's here. He is here. What happened? I have no idea. Maybe it's, maybe, I'll bet you, you know what? I'll bet you he parked in the fire lane and he had to move and drive around and find a place He to must park. have been one of the license plates that they called. That's probably it. Oh, Bobby and Ocean. Here you see, hard hitting Bobby Ocean. This man who overcame so much in September to become the first Test of Strength Heavyweight Champion made his way through that tournament and is now here tonight to defend that title. He's been defending that title all over New England. He is here tonight, back in the home base of Test of Strength here in Northampton to defend that championship against his most bitter rival. That's right. He's got the contest of the ages here. This is Goliath. This is huge. This is enormous. This is Bobby Ocean. This is Dan Demand. This is for the Test of Strength Championship, and it's going to take place right now. And now, let's go up to the ring and mark Adam Haggerty for the introductions. Oh. Bobby Ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest Scheduled for one fall is a special lumberjack match, and it is for the Test of Strength Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, to my right is the challenger. He hails from the 25th century and is the leader of Team Shazam. This is Dan to Man. And does it? This keeps going off. Oh, 
and Jimmy Jimmy Mies outside to Mono. my left, being accompanied to the ring by Jimmy Mees. He is fighting. He is fighting out of Hartford, Connecticut, and weighs 185 pounds. And for 197 days, he has been your Test of Strength Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, hard hitting Bobby Ocean! Fled, this has that big fight feel. Both Absolutely. competitors chose their own lumberjacks to come out here and represent them with weapons. Bobby Ocean, and, and it's interesting, and you can tell how big and how important this match is. Dan usually comes out here and he'll run his mouth and he'll run down the town and make fun of the people. None of that tonight. He is focused. Especially he, Ref Gina. Absolutely, he is focused. He has his goal in line tonight. He's not messing around. He came here tonight to become TOS Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, I agree. You know, Dan the Man's been on my radar for a long time. I'm a big fan of Dan's work, and I think what he says is real, and I think he wants this more than anybody, and that's why he's in a position he is right now in the center of that ring, looking straight across at Bobby Ocean in that Test of Championship. He wants it. He needs it. Oh, like cheap the shot. Stones. And a cheap shot by Dan the Man to start this thing off. The bell rings. We are underway. And these two guys, who do not like each other, are trading shots in the middle of this ring. Oh, went for that spinning discus punch. And oh. Dan went for the cutter. It went for Shazam. Has him up now. Dan drops down the backside. Neither one able to assert control here. Bobby, and we, they call him hard hitting for a reason as he fires those elbows to the back of the head of Dan DeMann. Oh, Dan oh, up and wow. over. Wow, Dan oh. man. Shades oh. of Ric Flair. Absolutely. Woo! Off the top oh. rope, big body slam. Ocean now in control here. Stalking. Up, Dan. He's stalking Dan. And we talked Slade. Oh, big clothesline. There's Dan over the top rope and out to the floor. Oh, now the, now the Lumberjack's going to work. I gotta tell you, Bobby's got a look in his eyes tonight. He's got a fire inside of him I can see that I've never seen before. We might have a bigger brawl amongst the Lumberjacks than we do the competitors, Slade. As long as they keep it over there and away from us. All right, now they are going to war again, but somebody's gotta get Dan DeMann back in the ring and oh, go to work with those crutches. And Dan in the wrong part of town. Oh! Oh, God! Kendo stick. Jimmy Meese with the kendo stick. And Dan that's a little too close away. to comfort, if you ask me. Yeah, these guys are a little too close to us here. Oh, somebody to watch out for Deanna Rice. That poor woman's over there unprotected. Oh. This doesn't seem right. This can't be illegal. Uh oh, whoa. Oh. See who's over there protecting her? I think she's good. Jose's over there. We're good. Thank God. All right, now Dan back in the ring now. And walks into a suplex from Bobby Ocean. Snapped him over, hits the ropes, and drops that elbow with a ton of force right into the chest cavity of Dan DeMann. Kick out a one. That's what I like to see. Dan's still got plenty left in the tank. I tell you what, he took a lot of punishment from those lumberjacks at ringside, though. Waist lock now. That's one of the dangers of going outside Northern the Lights, look like at the this. Northern Lights. Look at the bridge by Bobby Ocean. Two count, all he could get. That's it. It's going to take more than that. And now, Bobby Ocean, again, we talked about stalking him. Oh, oh, wow. He wants to win. He wants to defend his title. But I get the feeling he wants to hurt Dan DeMann. And we talked a little bit, Slade, about the history between these two. It was Bobby Ocean that brought Dan DeMann to New England. It's very true. Fostered that relationship. They were tag team partners at one point. Yes, they were. And now here they are, bitter enemies years later. Well, when you tell, when you talk to Bobby, when you talk to Bobby Ocean, he'll tell you jealousy consumed Dan DeMann, led Dan to turn his back on Bobby. Series of attacks and cheap shots. And now Bobby's had enough. Bobby is ready to put this thing to bed and walk away from the situation with Dan. But before he can do that, he has to, he has to score a convincing victory here tonight in Northampton. I think he just chopped the soul out of Dan DeMann. 
Dan Demand's on Dream Street, that's for sure. He's staggering around that ring. And watch out now, close, oh, forearm. I thought he was gonna close line him over the top. Instead hits that big forearm and now charges off. Oh my God, did you hear that forearm? Wow! Right to the side of the head and now oh, the Lumberjacks! Wait a second! The Lumberjacks pull down the top rope and Bobby Ocean goes flying. Well, the chaos out there. Oh, you heard that? And now they're Jimmy trying to, Bobby's Lumberjacks trying to get Dan's Lumberjacks off of Bobby. Jimmy's out here oh, and Bob, runs in the park. Dan went right into the cover but only got one. They've now traded one count so far. Neither man really getting close to getting the Duke here yet. He's choking him out a little bit. Dan's gonna do whatever it takes, choking. You know, it's nothing. That's gonna wear Bobby Ocean down. He's gonna do whatever it takes. Well, like I said, Sled, this is a focus. This is a level of Dan Demand I haven't seen before. You gotta wonder, there, there's something to be said for sticking to what brought you to the dance. It looks like Dan's changed up his game plan a little bit here tonight. Dan looks more focused than I've ever seen him in my entire life. I mean, look at a look at his eyes. This man wants that championship more than anything. He wants to prove that all the crap that he talked leading up to tonight, you know, is not just talking to talk, it's walking to walk too. Look, we already had one Ric Flair reference in this match. Well, now we got two. <laughs> and Dan sends Bobby Ocean into the corner, charges in with that big forearm, and now has him hooked. Bulldog coming, there it is. Wow. Bobby Ocean right back to his feet, uh, back to his knees, I should say. It's right. a boot from Dan Demand. This could be it. Dan, lack of days, little back press there. Oh, you heard Dan. He said he's got to be kidding me. Look at him. He's shocked. He's surprised. He doesn't know Bobby Ocean's still kicking out. I'll tell you what. There is one thing you can say about Bobby Ocean. That man does not know the meaning of the word quit. He will give everything he has. Well, you know what, Jason? I can speak on that. And fight for your dreams when he won that match. He had busted his ankle, and he still continued the entire match. And not just continued, he won. Yep, in, in very, very impressive fashion. Dan looking to put an end to the fairy tale here as he covers him but only gets a two. That is the first two count we've had, though, Slade. The guys have endured a beating, and they're just getting two counts now? Yeah. We know the crowd's here for firmly behind Bobby Ocean and Dan Ponton as he picks him up, comes off the ropes. Bobby Ocean ducks. Beautiful drop kick. Well, to the outside. I'll tell you what, for my money, Bobby Ocean's drop kick, one of the prettiest in New England. Absolutely. I mean, did you see the height he gets? Absolutely. I mean, the form? Absolutely. Like butter. That's the term they use. Like butter. And now the chaos of the Lumberjacks at ringside going after Dan again. Oh, bear, baseball bat right into the midsection. Oh my God. Kendo stick to the top of the head. Jimmy out here just taking everybody out. Again, Dan the man, look at him. He's trying to hide under the chair. Dan is trying to get away and the Lumberjacks will not have it. Wow. There's nothing the official can do about this. This is all legal here tonight. Pure chaos is what it is. I mean, look at this. It is nuts, and Dan rolls out the other side to the safety of his own Lumberjacks. I feel like I'm at a weird rate. <laughs> That's a, probably a pretty fair comparison. Bobby Ocean pulled out, and he's in the wrong part of town now with Dan's Lumberjacks. Dan's got to get out of there is what he's got to do. Yeah, because Bobby's Lumberjacks are coming over, so Dan should be getting in the ring. What do you get, Honest Abe's Kane? What is, what is going on here? This is just nuts. This is cats and dogs living together. Chaos and anarchy reign supreme here at Lone Survivor. And now Dan back in the ring. They gotta throw Bobby Ocean back in there. He's, Dan is calling for him to throw Bobby back in. He wants to win this thing right now. We need order in here. And Bobby's taking a, quite a beating on the outside. The championship match. It's a heavyweight championship match. I'm saying. And Dan wasting time though. He's got Bobby down, but he's asking for a weapon. He wants that cookie sheet. That thing is big and heavy. So oh, can't imagine what he's gonna do uh -oh. with this. Let's, let's go silent and listen to this. Oh! oh! 
Oh my god! Oh my god. You wanna talk about the back? That's how you work the back. I don't know how much of this Bobby Ocean could take. You talked about the price he paid just to win that title in September. And now, what he is putting his body through to try to retain it here tonight. This is what happens when an issue for a championship becomes personal. And it seems like the style oh. match that they chose for this is really working for Dan to win. Now this is not necessarily Bobby Ocean's forte. He's like more it. of a technical wrestler. He likes to get it done in the ropes. Hard hitting, but, but fair. This is not the style of match I would have assumed Bobby Ocean would want. Dan seeing the opportunity to take advantage of those rules. Certainly, if he seems to have a better fit for this match. Absolutely. Dan looks like he's ready to finish it right here. He's got him lined up. Oh, no, blocked. Oh, they knocked heads. They knocked heads in the center of the ring. Both men are down, Slade. This one, wow. This one, Rocky style, could come down to who can get to their feet first. That's right. This might be over in a 10 count. And what a shame it would be if this match had to end with a double countdown. It would be a shame if Bobby Ose is the one that got up first. Not that you're rooting for anybody, though, Slade. Perfectly impartial journalist at ringside here. That's right. Headbutt by Dan, and now Bobby firing back. We talked about how well these two know each other. Everything has been, they've had, they've had a cue on each other all night. They're giving it everything they got right now. Absolutely. Just trading blows. Two gladiators in the center of the ring fighting for the heavyweight championship. Those headbutts are vicious. And Dan almost took out some out of himself with those headbutts. Ocean Bobby Ocean, the they throw a close fist. How is, no, that's like a forearm shot, Slade, come on. I couldn't tell from this angle. Who knows how much Bobby Ocean is even standing right now with all the punishment he took from that cookie sheet. This was devastating, by the way. And now sends Dan, Dan with the reversal. Oh my oh, God, Ocean! Oh, you heard that from me. Oh, what a clothesline, and now European uppercut. Bobby Ocean's fired up. Sends him into the corner, Dan reverses, charges in and eats a boot. Breakfast, lunch, dead dinner. Hurricane DDT by Bobby Ocean. Hits the ropes. Oh! Sit up, clothesline into the cover, right into the cover. Hooks the leg up. No. Thank God, Dick kicked out. I thought that was it right there, Slade. Thought I was oh. going to be out of a pick again. Got a cross face. He's going for the cross face. He's got it in. He's got Wait the cross second. face. Wait a second. What's this? What? Wait a second. What the hell? Oh, man. What the hell am I looking at, Slade? Things have gotten out of control. That's what we're looking at. Oh! Spin kick, Bobby Ocean. And Dan sets Bobby Marcel Ocean Marcel Williams out of the ring. Dan the man's left alone. Uh-oh. This might be for the best. We're, 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 we're warming up with that kendo stick. We're ready to swing for the fences. Oh! That's what you get for going into, for, you know, into business for yourself. Trying to take out my guy, Dan oh. the man. And so much going on on the floor, it's easy to forget that Bobby Ocean is being trying to get back in the ring. The Lumberjacks pulling him out to do more damage. Bobby's Lumberjacks are being distracted here, and it's allowing Bobby to take a lot more punishment on the floor. Yeah, but who's in the ring catching his breath right now? Absolutely. Brilliant you know? strategy by Dan DeMann. That's what I'm saying. This is great. Oh, wait a second. Referee Tony S. out here now. Put his hands on our referee Blue Shoes. Oh, oh my God! Spin on her. The disrespect! Oh, wait a second! What is this? No! What the hell just happened? She just kicked his face off after she did. What is she that? She walked out. She walked out. We don't have a referee. Bobby Ocean is stuck, and he doesn't even know what just happened. Bobby Ocean has him up. The oh, one hit a quitter. Kick. The one hit a quitter. He executes. No cover. No official. Tony S in. One, two. Oh! Damn, the man's still in it. I told you, Jason. I told you it's going to take more than that. In the time it took Tony S to get to the ring, 
Dan able to muster just enough to kick out at can't two believe it. and seven eighths. My God, he came out of nowhere. Well, watch out. Superman. Bobby's got that kendo stick. And he's warming up here. He's taking his practice swings. He's ready to swing for the fences. Oh, oh wait a second. That was a blatant low blow by Dan the man. But there are no disqualifications That's here. That's right. Dan with the kendo oh. stick goes to work on the back of Bobby Ocean. You heard him, he said he needs the belt. It's gonna do whatever it takes. And who would have thought, Slade, the decision of an official could have turned this entire match now? It might have just cost Bobby Ocean the title. That's what I'm saying. Just him! He got it! He's got it! He's gonna get him! One, one, two, three! Oh, you can Your new test of strength, everyone champion! Here wow. is your winner! Company is the new test of strength champion. Uh, Slade, I'm in shock. I'm not. I, exactly what I told you was going to happen. We knew that this was Dan's goal all along. He wanted to take the title. He wanted to take it off of Bobby Ocean. Oh, here's the referee. I mean, the Alex GM. Rojas. Oh, my God. Alex Rojas is here. And he doesn't look very happy. I know Slade and Alex Rojas. Slade, Alex Rojas and Dan Demand don't get along particularly well. I don't think. Alex is very happy to have to hand this belt to Dan, but there's nothing that can be done. I feel like this whole match turned when Blue Shoes decided she was gonna... Tell you what it was, it's going to business for herself. She but may she have pushed to the limit, she snapped. She may have cost Bobby Ocean that heavyweight championship here tonight. <laughs> but regardless of the storyline you want to go with, whether you want to blame her, whether you want to give credit to Dan, the one thing you cannot do again, is deny the fact that we have crowned a brand new Test of Strength Heavyweight Champion. Heavyweight Fucking champion. the best day ever. This is better Dan. than Christmas. I, I'm in a state of shock here. I did not expect this. He snapped this. his fingers and he just deleted Bobby Ocean. He hit that Shazam, and that was all she wrote. Oh, he almost hit me with that thing. And as going forward from this point on, here in Test of Strength, Dan Demand is the man. Oh, the crowd's in shock. I mean, look here. Everybody's stunned. I love it. Just unbelievable. Deanna Ray going to try to get some words with the new champion. You are a woman. Know your place. Get with the rest of those chicks and make me pancakes and babies. Ladies and gentlemen, your new Test of Strength champion, the face of this company, Dan the Man, a.k.a. Danos. You may not like it. Get the cameras out. Stand up! I said, stand up! Oh, stand up! And right. cheer for me! Stand up, Jason. What are you doing? I'll tell you what, Slade. Uh, Dan earned his victory here tonight. He played by the rules that were in front of him. But I, much like this packed house here in Northampton, find myself in a state of shock, and we, we need to get some medical attention for Bobby Ocean. That's your new champion, Jason. He looks like, Bobby Ocean looks like he's in a bad way, and I certainly don't want to take away from Dan DeMann and our new heavyweight champion, but unbelievable turn of events here tonight in Northampton, and Bobby Ocean, he, he looks like he's on, he's glazed, his eyes are glazed over. We need, we need to get somebody to check on Bobby Ocean. I, I just, this is just incredible. I, I had no idea we were going to see anything like this, Slade. Um, it's, it's hard. we gotta, we got to regroup here a little bit. We still have an open challenge from Thomas Santel to come next. And, of course, following that, we're going to crown the first ever Test of Strength Tag Team Champions. We don't know the status of Above the Influence here tonight, but we know 
that the Kowalski guys are coming for gold. That's right. No one has given us an answer. Who's replacing Hippie Dicky Moon tonight? I have no idea. He got KO'd. That's all I, they told us. I've, I've tried. All I heard was Dick, Hippie got KO'd, and there's nothing we can do about it. They, they have a replacement. There is somebody that's going to team with Moonshine. We don't know who it is. What we do know is as Bobby Ocean makes his way to the back. Oh. Looking like he's in a rough way right now. Yeah, he's, he's not doing very well. I hope I hope we got him checked out in the back. Fans, we hit a round of applause to show respect from the crowd here to Bobby Ocean, who just saw his near 200-day reign, the top test of strength wrestling, come to an end in very, very controversial fashion. Originally, I was supposed to wrestle former Impact Wrestling superstar and current NXT superstar, Robbie E, now known as Rob Strauss, who also happened to be on The Amazing Race. Also, happened to be on The Rock's very own game show, Titan Games. But I happened to be down in Orlando this weekend, or this past week, teaching my unique form of catch wrestling and grappling to the future superstars in this business. And I saw Rob down there, and he said, Thomas, I don't want any part of you. After being on The Amazing Race, and being near the rock, I don't want to get stretched by you. <laughs> I want to go into the movies. So then, Test of Strength Wrestling decided to get one of the brightest independent standouts in the Northeast, Sean Carr. Well, last night, Sean Carr had a little conundrum and he hurt his elbow. So, oh, this is how this works. I'm not, I'm not up to date on this technology stuff. I still have, I still have a, a tube in my TV. So that, okay, it's a little louder now. Whoa, thank you. Uh, so yeah, Sean Carr is not here. So now I am left without an opponent. I don't, I don't have an opponent. Hold on, hold on. I have a plan. So. What? I don't want to catch something. I don't want to catch something. That beer, I don't know where that beer is. At. <laughs> what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to do what I did in my old carnival days, where I used to challenge somebody from the crowd. So, tonight. He said open challenge. I didn't think it was Who a challenge is going to be the lucky 
Is he wanted crazy? you to step in this ring. Gosh, so this was crazy and enough get to do it. stretched from pillar to post by me. Slade, he wants to do it. Slade wants to do it. Is it Not me. Be this guy? Wait a second. Huh? You want to look tough in front of your girlfriend? Or is that your wife? Slade will do you it. Get the Please, uh, I'm not the getting it. This guy right here. Oh, no. Thomas. Like Slade will do uh, it. Listen, if Rob Strauss is again stretched by this guy, neither am I. Hey, Slade. Four on. Slade. He wants. He back. wants in. Don't give this crowd any ideas. They might start chanting my name, you know. He wants in. He's not looking over here. Oh, oh. Probably is that the Joey best. Ryan? Is that Joey Ryan right there? You want some? You want some? Well, you know what? None of you are getting in here with me because I'm above each and every one of you. Yeah, he's talking to you. See, I've wrestled, I think he's I've he's wrestled talking in to you, 46 Jason. states, 13 countries every morning. I do 1,011 repetitions of calisthenics. And, a lot of repetitions. And, that is a lot. And... I don't. Guess what? Hey, hey, guess what? I don't drink beer. Oh. No, I drink Ovaltine. So, someone for you. as trained and skilled as myself is not going to waste my time with any one of you. No, I want a young, up and coming, hungry athlete from the back. That wants to take so it said the back. from that I locker about room. Me for a that wants to I take tried to get you in there. You didn't want to do it. Yeah, well, then he started complimenting me. me young and so hungry. if anyone's feeling lucky, come on in the ring and find out why I'm Thomas Santel. And they don't make them like they used to. Yeah. Oh, he's going to show them off. Why they don't make them like they used to, huh? Yeah. He's looking for a young guy. Well, let, let's see who it's going to be. I've heard rumors that there were some people lining up to accept this open challenge to try to make a name for themselves. I don't know who finally got the, uh, the spot. Well, ladies and gentlemen, oh, answering the call from this? Highland Park, Texas, this is Anthony Katina. Anthony Katina? Anthony Katina, very impressive young athlete. I didn't know he was going to accept the challenge, but I did speak to him in the back prior to the show here tonight. I'll tell you what, he told me he is he considers himself a six-tool product. Six tools? I'm the six-tool product, See? Anthony Katina. Told you. And I've been Remember biding my time, out. waiting for the perfect opportunity to make an impact, and there's no better time than now against the former WWE superstar. Oh, let's do it, I, I'm hunky dory with that. Let's do it, we got a little hustle here. Come around here, partner. Let's have a nice, classic grappling contest. Check it. Wow, here we go. All right. Anthony Katina. Anthony Katina. Now, this is a guy whose family bleeds professional wrestling. His parents wrestled in the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas, the classic legendary building. His great-grandfather came to this country and wrestled in New York. This guy's family is synonymous with professional wrestling. And I'll tell you what, a victory here tonight over Thomas Santel would do a lot to move Anthony's name to the top of that list in his family. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, this isn't the Sportatorium. This is Thomas Santel's ring right here. Well, Thomas Santel, another guy you got to think is looking really closely at that test of strength championship. As, as great a competitor as Santel is, you know he's got to want some gold around his waist. Now that, that's a barn burner right there. Oh, he lost his glasses. Watch out, he can't see anything. Move out of the way. You're going to step on him. So he's going to help him find his glasses here. And, oh, Katina. Oh, oh, he, oh, he got him. He had it scouted there. He wasn't falling for that, I guess. Anthony Katina now throws the glasses away. He's ready to go. Oh, he broke him. Oh. He broke the glasses. Oh, 
here to get those pieces out of the ring. What are you crazy? You know how expensive those glasses probably are? What he said it was eight dollars. Is that what he said? Who I said don't that? Know. All right, now here we go. Santel said he wants a classic grappling match. We'll see if Katina obliges. You little, heard it. A little trash talking going on. All right, I like it. It's Call, getting filthy in here. Collar and elbow tie up now. Katina with a size and power advantage, although I gotta say, Santel is put together. I've seen Santel chop down bigger guys than this. I was gonna say. Santel knows catch wrestling like nobody's business. He's gonna put that on display here tonight. This guy's got untapped skills. Stuff you've never even seen before. Unbelievable. Yeah, we'll see. They're, they're feeling each other out right now. They're sort of circling each other in the field. Nobody wants to make a mistake. It's sort of like if you watch UFC. The guys will circle around each other. They'll do a little dance. They don't want to, Nobody wants to get caught with that knockout shot. That's right. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like they're throwing a couple little, uh, you know, light shots there. Yeah. Test out the distance, get the field for the guy. A couple little jabs, and Santel probably not familiar with Katina, so you can understand that strategy. Well, I think Santel's had enough matches in his career at this point that he's ready for anything. Oh, I'm sure, but he's had no chance to scout or get ready or watch film or do anything. Well, he's got to be confident in his talent, you know? Oh, I'm sure he is. And now he's got, look at that, cravat applied around the neck and now snaps him over with it. Beautiful form. Rear chin lock. I'll tell you what, Santel is an absolute artist in that ring. Oh, Katina reverse. With the hammer lock now. Has control, has leverage. You see a Sant oh, oh close that. pinning condition here. Oh, referee a little slow to get there. Didn't see it. Referee was out of position there. I don't think he was going to get a three count either way, though. Oh, now Katina oh. perhaps making a mistake here. That's right, showboating does nothing for Santel. Uh, you're not going to take Thomas Santel off of his game by flexing your muscles. No. They've tried and they've all fallen. And now test of strength here, ironically enough. Look at that. Sits right in the name. Namesake of the company going on the center of the ring now. And now both men jockeying for position. You see that leg. Katina using that leg to create that momentum to drive Santel oh. down. Look at the neck strength, the core strength. Wow. Of Thomas Santel, though, to stay up. And now, oh, wow. Oh, push it back. That is power, Slade. Nice exchange here by Katina. Sid. Oh, nice everyone. chain wrestling here. This is sort of a lost art in the world of professional wrestling these days, a match like this. Right, you don't get a lot of catch and catch can. No, it's an absolute joy to sit and watch a match like this sometimes for an old school guy like myself. Santel back to his feet now. Katina still has wrist control though. Santel trying to roll out of it and does. Nice job by Santel there. Oh, look, oh. And look at Santel isolating that arm and driving him down. Wow. Oh, Katina rolls through it. Nice exchange there into an arm ringer. I'll tell you what, Katina's impressive so far. You know, this is a big guy. Got a good look, really knows what he's doing in there. But Thomas Santel, seasoned vet. A man who wrestles a way that you never see and haven't seen in years. Yeah, you get the feeling that maybe Santel with a little rope of dope here. He's gonna let Katina try to sort of wear himself down a little bit and then he'll, when the time is right, when Santel feels like attacking, he'll go on the full force off. That's right, let him do some fancy stuff and then, you know, Santel's just gonna be like, yeah, wear him down, come back, tie him up like a pretzel. But at a certain point, when you allow your opponent to get the kind of momentum that Katina has right now, you could very easily find yourself on the losing end of that. It's got to stay focused. You can't play around with a competitor of the caliber of Anthony Katina. Oh, that shot, that strike right to the midsection. The force and the strength behind which Santel executes those strikes can buckle a man, and you're seeing it right now. Took him right off his feet. Took all the wind out of him. I bet he regrets flexing now. Right? And now Katina moved back to the corner. Santel's so classic, not even wearing knee pads. Oh, 
you hear that? The aggression. So I mean, you know, once he gets in that ring, it's just like you said, like a light switch goes off, and all of a sudden, and now the aggression comes out of nowhere. And now Katina being grinded down in that corner. <laughs> Santel trying to pick him up here. He, he wants to put him away. He's got him by the ears, as he said. Well, get him out of the corner. Come on, ref. Katina up and over. Santel, nobody home. Arm dragged by Katina now. Oh, and now right back into that arm bar. Santel screaming no for the ref. I'm not sure Santel expected to get the kind of performance he's gotten out of Katina at this point. Now, this is my first time seeing this little young man here. And uh, I'll tell you, Katina looks impressive. Drop but is it going to be enough to look impressive to take out a man like Santel? I don't know. And Santel fires him over the top rope. Playing him right on his feet. Got him. Look at that. Oh, thought Santel was going to bridge out of there. Looked like it, but couldn't get the momentum under him. Was able to roll through it, though, inside cradle. Referee again out of position. This wow. referee on multiple occasions has found himself out of position in this match. I've seen the same thing. Santel shoves him off and gets run through by Katina. But a Katina, great trade. But Katina stopped to pose for the fans. You have got to take advantage when you get an athlete the caliber of Santel on his back. It's things like that that are going to cost you the match. And there you go, Santel with the go behind. Reversed by Katina off the ropes. Over Santel rolls roll oh, through. Roll. O'Connor rolling to the cover. Oh, oh! Santel oh. just that quick hooks him. Good night. And he's got him stretched now. You gotta wonder how long Katina can hold on here. Is he going? He might be going to sleep. Now Katina's trying to roll through. There's a sleeper on here. He's telling him to ask him. Ask him, ref. He's got him. Line up. Oh, Katina fires him off. Nice reversal. Nice way to get out of that. Well executed drop kick. Drove Santel back to the corner. Oh! oh! Santel explodes out of the corner with that clothesline and now has him hooked front face lock. Has that leg hooked. Fisherman's Buster coming. There it is. Good night. Into the cover. One, two, three. A Thomas Santel wins the open challenge. He speaks with Thomas Santel. All right. Well, congratulations tonight on your win. I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Like what? You're, you're quite exquisite. Thank you. So tell me, how did you do it? How did you get your win tonight? 
How did, what do you mean, how did I get my win tonight? I pinned his shoulders to the mat. One, two, three. I know that little guy. He trains at my dojo over there. All right? I don't, 10 years, I, five years, I don't want any part of that kid. Okay? His uncle, his uncle I'll take. Uh, listen, listen. That boy there, you can, you can hold the mic, it's okay. We can touch hands, it's okay. Uh, that boy there has a future, okay? He's a big old cornbread farm boy, but he's got some smarts, he's got some wrestling ability. But you can't teach, you can't teach experience. And I ended up on top tonight for the one, two, three. And all of you found out, despite all the great athletes, all the great high flyers, in wrestling today, I take it to the mat and I get the job done there because I'm Thomas Santel and they don't make them like they used to. Yeah. You're right, right here. Unbelievable. You can't argue with anything Santel just said. She continues to impress here at Test of Strength and everywhere else. But speaking of impress slate, it is time. It is main event time. We have, it, it's been a long and winding road. We started with 32 men, 16 teams. Oh, God. Throughout those 16 teams, we are down. Oh, oh. Oh, he, oh I'm going to cover that up. Uh, glasses and beep. Well, I don't have the glasses anymore, but I still do sure have one hell of an indestructible gluteus matchup. <laughs> Thomas Santel, everyone. Wow. Uh, I guess he wasn't done. Yeah, I didn't hear, I didn't expect that coming. Anyway, as I was saying, Slade, 32 men, 16 teams started this road a long time ago. It all comes to a head here tonight in Northampton. We crown the very first Test of Strength Wrestling Tag Team Champions. It's Jay Freddy and SWB, the Kowalski guys, against the team of Above the Influence. But the thing is, we go into this match, and so do the Kowalski guys, not knowing what they're going to get from Above the Influence. They haven't given us a single clue as to who's replacing Hippie Dicky Moon tonight. Who got KO'd. Replaced. Who right, got, who got KO'd. Yeah, Hippie, you know. Hippie got KO'd. That's all we've been told. We know he's here. We know Moonshine is here. We know he has a partner. We don't know who it is. But it is time to crown the first Test of Strength Tag Team Champions. Let's go up to the ring for the official introductions. Are you folks ready for your main event? Are you folks ready to make history with the first ever Testo Strength Wrestling Tag Team Champions? There you see General Manager Alex Rojas with those beautiful Test of Strength Tag Team Championship wow. belts. Look it's at amazing. Them Look at that. Beautiful belts. Alex went above and beyond. Forget those tiles. Those are beautiful. And there you hear the, emer the music, the emergency call. The man known as SWB, his partner, Jay Freddy, the Kowalski guys. I'll tell you what, Slick has held every championship there is to hold up and down New England. Tonight, you can't hold a championship that didn't exist. So tonight he looks to put his stamp on the Test of Strength Tag Team Champions and put his name in the record books as one of the first men to hold those belts along with Jay Freddy. You know, to have to go through and defeat 15 teams and come out on top, it's an amazing thing. And you know, if there's one thing Slick wants to do, that's make a stamp in history, you know. Test of Strength is his baby. That's what means the world to him. Absolutely. But the goal... To accomplish the goal is going to be difficult because the roadblock standing in their way is the team of Above the Influence. And they go into this match with uncertainty. Last weekend, all we have been told is that there was an incident, the hippie got KO'd. We know that. That's all we know. We know Moonshine McCready is here. He's going to compete. We know he has a partner. We, we know Hippie's here. We don't know who Moonshine's partner is going to be. Hippie will be in the corner, we've been told. There's the music. As we await the entrance of Above the Influence and we try to see who 
will take the hippies place here tonight. There's the hippie. There's no the fight, I'll tell you that. Oh yeah! And who, ah. who is this guy? Hi, Boots. Moonshine looks like he's drunk already. Of course he's drunk. When is he not drunk? How's he gonna compete like that? He does it every night. This guy goes out there trashed. The puts on a killer performance. It's almost like it gives him superpowers. But to do it against a team the caliber of the Kowalski guys is going to be very, very difficult. Do you have any insight on who this partner is? Ah, uh, you know, I've never seen this guy in my life. What does it say on the back? The, the good guy? He's got some good hair, what's that say? The good hair, sorry. The like Kyle Bradley? Kyle Bradley? Northampton, Massachusetts. This is your main event here tonight at Lone Survivor. It is a tag team contest Find out now. scheduled for one so. fall. So Mark Haggerty has and the answer. it is the final round in the tournament to crown the first ever Test of Strength Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Introducing first in the corner to my right, they hail from the life of the nearest party and weigh in at a total combined weight of 444 pounds, accompanied by Hippie Dickie Moon. They are Moonshine McCready and Kyle with the good hair. Kyle with the good hair? I guess, I mean, that's, that's questionable if you ask me, but okay. And their opponents to my left Fighting out of Watertown, New York, and Boston, Massachusetts, respectively. They weigh in at a total combined weight of 405 pounds. Slick Wagner Brown, Jay Freddy, the Kowalski guys! Tremendous ovation for the Kowalski guys here tonight. I gotta, I gotta ask you though, Slater, if. if if Above the Influence wins the titles here tonight, do they like freebird them? All three of them champions? How does this work? We'd have to ask the GM, I guess. Because, I mean, the hippie got KO'd, but that only lasts for so long. Eventually, he's going to get back in the ring. Exactly. How's this going to work? I don't know. Where is Alex Rojas? we got to ask him this. That's good question. We need, our, we need an investigator journalist to tell us what's going on here. Crowd here loves Jay Freddy. You mentioned that absolute classic he put on here with Thomas Santel. Earned a lot of respect from this crowd. And myself. I can't wait to see what he's gonna pull out tonight. Well, him and SWB gonna make quite the team here. <laughs> Hippie's over here trying to help Moonshine out of the ring. All right, we are underway. The very first test of strength tag team champions will be crowned here tonight. Will it be above the influence? Will it be the Kowalski guys? We are going to find out. Collar and elbow type in the middle of the ring. Kyle and SWB. I'm not calling him Mr. With the Good Hair. Can I just call him Kyle? Wait, can we even call these guys above the influence? That's what it says on the paper I have. I'm going with it. All right. You got to wonder what kind of role the hippie might play on the outside as well, too. I mean, he's got the opportunity here to you know, do a little distraction technique. Well, he's Someone tells me he might be a... Uh, too much in the clouds over there to even do that. Well, the hippie's always been sort of like the thing that levels out Moonshine and keeps him sort of grounded and able to compete. Without him in the ring, you gotta wonder if that has an effect. Exactly, you gotta wonder if these guys even have any chemistry. Like, where'd this guy come from? Nice arm drag takeover by Kyle, and Wagner goes for the chop. Head scissors kick over. Nicely done by Kyle. Oh, with a good hair. That's Slick. Oh, Slick tried to KO the hippie again. Oh, God. And watch out. Kyle oh. dives through the ropes and takes out SWB with that suicide dive. It's right in front of us here. Throws him in quickly right into the cover. Nicely done by Kyle. Above the influence. Almost stole one right there. If you asked me, it wasn't even close. It's going to take a lot more than that. That tag made. Moonshine McCready now officially in the ring for the first time. 
It was Moonshine and Dickey that went through all those other teams to get to this championship. And then something happened. We still haven't gotten details as to what actually happened, but we know the hippie got KO'd. We know he's outside the ring. And now we enter Kyle with the good hair. Yeah, I mean, uh, he looks fine to me if you ask me. Like, I don't know why he's not out there in the first place, but maybe he's got a concussion. Japanese arm drag. You don't expect to see a Japanese arm drag from Moonshine McGrady. I don't even know how he pulls that stuff out. I mean, this guy clearly can't even stand up straight. Jay Freddy in the ring for the first time here tonight, taking a bit of a beating here from above the influence. There you go, double elbow drop. Nice tag team maneuvers, maybe they will work well together. I tell you, it looks like Kyle has that same sort of calming influence on Moonshine to be able to focus and get him lined up. And this guy is handpicked by Hippie Moon, right? I think he knows him, yeah, I think they're friends. Oh. Wow. They've competed against each other, they've earned each other's respect. And These guys must have partied together then. I would imagine. I think that's the only way you earn the respect of the hippie. It's true. Blocks that right hand and fires off one of his own and one for Slick and for good measure. Oh. Oh, Kyle almost took a tumble there, but oh, Jay, Jay Freddy saw the opening. Jay Freddy's towel right there might have caused the good. Kyle with the good hair. Good catch slide and Jay Freddy saw that opening and like a veteran he is, took advantage of it. And he sets Kyle into the corner first, sternum first. Big back suplex. And now the Kowalski guys are in firm control. And you sort of feel like above the influence needed to get this thing over with quickly. And the longer this match went, the more to the advantage of the veteran team of the Kowalski guys it was going to be. Yeah, it's not looking that great right now for these guys. You're right. Maybe if they had gotten the job done sooner, they would have stand in a much better spot. Now you got to wonder Cover. with this kind of showmanship here. Oh, that's going to help out Slick and Jay Freddy. Kowalski guys. Kowalski guys came in an eyelash there to win the championship right there. Freddy has him set up for a side rush, and what's Wagner going to do off the inside? Oh, big oh. boot right into the side rushing. Wow, Slick with the Claymore. Jay Freddy with the Russian leg sweep. And Tony S with the two count. I'll tell you what, I, I've been impressed with Kyle with the good hair so far. He's shown a lot of fight. That he has. I see why Hippie picked him, but you know, the good hair is a little judgmental there. I, just, I feel like my hair is much nicer. You would be wrong. You, you would well, I mean, I'm not taking I, advice from you. I mean, look at your hair. I mean, you would definitely be wrong. I, my hair is definitely better than your hair. And my hair is not close to Kyle's, Kyle with the good hair. Come on. What are you, Jason, with the good hair now? No. You know this guy? You guys working together? No, no there's no relation. You just happen to have good hair, huh? Yes, exactly. And good elbows being thrown to the midsection of Jay Freddy now, and a chop as he's able to create some separation here. But Freddy cuts it oh, off. Jay Freddy's explosive. He closed that gap very, very quickly and delivered that knee right to the midsection. Takes Moonshine off the apron and right into the cover. Beautiful strategy. Oh. Moonshine able to break it up, though. That's it. You saw they pulled his foot off. That's all it took. Tagged SWB. The Kowalski guys working like a well oiled machine here tonight. They started off a little bit slow. I don't think they had Kyle with the good hair scouted, but now that they've got control, they can exploit this advantage that they have. Oh, oh God. European uppercut, followed by a forearm. What we got here? All force for Wagner. Jay Freddy fires off with an elbow to the back, to the front of the face, sorry, into the cover, two, and all he could get was two. I thought that was gonna be it. What a quick exchange there, hard to keep up. What a maneuver. You need to be the, what is it, the Micro Machines guy from back in the day to keep up with all the action going on in the ring tonight. Whew. You got it. High paced action. Our He's young got... crowd has no idea what that joke was, but we'll go with it. Chops being exchanged center of the ring between Kyle and Jay Freddy here. I think if you're Kyle, I don't think you want to stand in the middle and strike with Jay Freddy. Absolutely not. I don't think anybody would want to. This guy, he throws shots like I've never seen before in my life. Nice drop kick by Kyle. Needs to get to the corner. Moonshine itching to get in. The big man needs the tag. Referee Tony S executing the count here. And Jay Freddy, oh, see, Kyle made a mistake. He went to the wrong corner. He was glassed, glassy eyed and went to the wrong corner. And that cost him. Jay Freddy better, better. reach. It's oh! a Now he's got to make the tag. Now he's got the opening. He took his face off. Kyle needs a tag in the worst way. He needs to tag Moonshine with the good beard. That's right. With the good hair. Oh my God, look at this. The guy's like, uh, 
country Jesus over here. I mean, I don't know. Oh, Moonshine in! Oh. Right through the clothesline! Oh, and another one! And a third! Look at the Moonshine on fire! Throwing power shots! And now a big scoop slam on Freddy, and it's gonna do the same to SWB! Moonshine charges in, ducks the shoulder by Freddy, and oh, Moonshine! Executing that power advantage he has. This is a guy who was drunk on his way to the ring. Backbreaker off the top rope. Moonshine in full control he's here. He's up. He's ready for a drink. I don't know if I would have tagged in Kyle. I don't know if he's recovered enough yet. Where's Richard the Jug? Oh, he's got him hooked up. Here he goes. Power slam. Wow. Kyle, this could be it. Kyle off Bring the top. Oh, no, no. up. That's it. Tony Ast out of position makes the count. Oh, Slick breaks it up. Oh, my goodness. Wow! I thought it was over. That close. Kyle with the hair with the good elbow. <laughs> Wagner has him hooked up front face lock, suplexing him down onto the knees of Jay Freddy. Just devastating maneuver. Excellent tag team maneuver, and now the cover. Moonshine! Two. This time Moonshine breaks up the pound. Hippie Dicky able to get him focused enough to get him into the ring to break up that count. You're right, I mean, you might be right. Hippie might be the clue that keeps Moonshine going. Exactly. Keeps it together. I'll tell you what, you look at Moonshine, he looks like a deleted scene from Breaking Bad, but that's not the case. He is an impressive competitor inside the ring. Or like, you know, a sequel to The Hangover, but like the fifth or sixth one when it should have ended like three times ago. Like if they never got out of the desert. Precisely. There you go. And Freddy and Kyle exchanging strikes in the center of the ring, and we said earlier. Oh, my chest hurts just watching this. Oh! Who will win this exchange? Oh, looks like Freddy's got the edge here. Comes off the ropes and Kyle oh! cuts him off. Pump handle kick. What a scissor kick. Oh, oh my knee, Jay Freddy. Running knee by Freddy now. Might has, be over. Has him hooked up. Oh, Rainbuster. Rainbuster by Freddy. Off the ropes. Shiny Three. wizard. Has him covered. Two. Oh. Oh, I thought that was it. I thought he had him. Jay Freddy thought he had it too. Unbelievable. Oh, Jay Freddy means business. He's taking off the wrist tape. You seen it? Well, that just puts your wrist in an awkward position. Unsafe. Listen. It's unprotected. That's an unprotected wrist. I don't think it's what he's thinking about. He's fired up right now. Freddy has him hooked up. Oh, Kyle drops out the back door. Reversal. Oh, reversal again, now off the ropes. Kyle trying to hang on, can't. O'Connor roll by Freddy. Two, all he can get. Roll through. Uh-oh. Oh, oh in a second. Kyle got, the hippie got KO'd again. Not oh, again. One, two. No. Oh, Kyle kicks out. Oh, no. Smart Moon move shine. by Freddy. Smart move by Freddy, drop kicked him, and now they've got Kyle right where they want him. There's no help coming for Kyle with the good hair. Oh, power bombed! And SWB! Strap on! Moves out right on top Jesus. of his head! They smushed him! That is it! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have new Here test of strength tag team champions! The Kowalski guys in Buddy! Tag team champions! Jay Freddy, Slick Wagner Brown, the Kowalski guys! Perhaps the favorites when this tournament started, and much like Duke in the NCAA tournament, these guys have run their way to the championship. And now, for the first time ever, we are going to see the presentation of the Test of Strength Tag Team Championships to the team of Jay Freddy and SWB, the Kowalski guys. They've done it. They've done the impossible. They went through 15 other teams to get to this point, and they are the first Tesla Strength Champions. These two men carry an impressive and an important legacy into the ring every time they go out there. But tonight, they've started a legacy. They've started a legacy of the Test of Strength Tag Team Championships. Congratulations to the Kowalski guys. That's right. There's some plenty of winners, but you know when you you know you're able to brag and say you are the first. It's a big thing. 
the first of a long line. There will never be another first tag team champions. It will always be SWB and J. Freddy. And I'll tell you what, above the influence, with a hell of an effort here tonight, they have nothing to be ashamed of. But it was simply a night that belonged to the Kowalski guys. Absolutely. These guys, they put it all out on the line. And the it was whole, an amazing match. The whole crowd out here celebrating with the Kowalski guys. The locker room is emptying. What a moment. You know the legacy that Killer Kowalski left. You know what this moment means to those two guys in the ring. Absolutely. And I'm sure Kowalski's looking down very proud right now. Unbelievable. What an evening we have had. I believe our uh, ringside interview is standing by. We're going to get some words from the tag team champions before we sign off here. What an evening. We've crowned new tag team champions. We have a new test of strength heavyweight champion. We have received no indication on the condition of Bobby Ocean. We hope he's okay. Absolutely. But what a night. What an unbelievable night. Looks like SWB is going to just Thank speak on his own. Let's right. go up to the ring to SWB. And Jay Freddy. I just want to say, this win was for all of you. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate your support. We know that you coming here tonight was a choice, and we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Give it up for everybody in Test of Strength Wrestling here tonight. Give it up for each and every one of you in the crowd tonight. You know, what you see here is something special because I'll tell you something right now. Wagner can attest to this. Him and I have both been around for a very long time. Companies come and companies go, but the one thing that always stays is family. And Test of Strength Wrestling, from the people in the back to the people who set the ring up, to the wrestlers, to the crew, this is a family effort. And all you people in the audience, you are part of the family as well. But now down to business, down to business. SWB and J. Freddy, we are the new test of strength tag team champions. And we are now offering the floor to any single tag team, whether in New England, it could be even AEW, Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, any tag team that wants to step into test of strength and prove what they got, try to take these belts from us. We got, we got top contenders right here. We got top contenders right here. The Bellow Twins. Good job tonight, guys. I'm sure we'll be seeing you down the road. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. We appreciate you. Get home safe. Buy some merchandise. Thank you. All right, Slay, now that you hear it from the new and the first test of strength tag team champions, we talked about it. What an amazing night we had here at Lone Survivor. It doesn't get much better than this, I'll tell you what. Nope. For, it's been intense. Absolutely. And for everyone in the back, for Slade Dangerfield, I'm Jason Stewart. We will see you next time. Stay strong. <laughs>